Oh my god, and welcome to Abrax Precipice, the Expanse role-playing game we play forever and ever. Uh, welcome, uh, Theater Reborn. This is our fourth phase, episode 13. Uh, we're getting deep into it. The crew is well on their way into onto Mundos, a planet where they have a colony that they're working on, trying to get trying to get a little upstart action. Um, we're in our second year of actually playing, of, of like real time playing, real time. I think in game it's like five or it's like five or six years now of, of in game time. But uh, we're uh, yeah, we're having a lot of fun with this two years. Uh, I got a lot of stuff to kind of like go over real quick. Um, yeah, I, I so those that don't know, I, I missed last week's game. Uh, I was at uh, the Telltale event, which just check out the new Expanse video game. It was cool. It's really fun. Uh, I really liked it. If you want more Expanse, people always ask me more Expanse. I hear in like all the Expanse groups on Facebook, we want more Expanse. Game is going to be a really a really kick in the pants for all of you out there. Uh, if you're not big, if you like the comic books, check out the comic. I finally read the, the two comics. They're pretty good. I'm digging where that's going. Uh, but our celebration and our expansion of it is through playing the role playing game. Of which I might add, two of our crew members and myself on Saturday will be talking via Zoom to a crowd in Oslo. For some reason, Oslo. I'm not opposed to Oslo. I'm just shocked at Oslo for a big Expanse <laughs> Geeks meetup um, and talking about the RPG. And uh, we actually had a fun little chat in our in our private group chat about which clip to show off. And uh, Maria by far has the best clip uh and we are very excited to share that and talk about that and kind of what our experience of the game is and, and celebrate the fandom of the expanse as all uh but let's get down to like brass tacks here and like some fun some really cool stuff um so to your anniversary we're doing some giveaways uh tonight's giveaway is gonna be a pdf bundle from green ronin has been generous to donate a few of those to us in addition from our express Bush, you'll get a set of dice um a the soundtrack on floppy disk this is ridiculous. A t-shirt of Abrax Precipice. And one of my friends, my local friends donated this to me. They said, hey, you know, we want to give something for you to give away. I was like, all right, what you got? And they have this really cool dragon miniature. It's it's pretty damn big. I painted one up, um, but they had an extra one. They wanted me to give it away. And I said, sure. Uh, there's kind of a picture of it on the side here. It's pretty magnificent. Um, but uh, it's from Tanaris. It's, an RP, it's like a D&D 5th edition compatible setting thing, board games deal. And but I'm giving that away, so I'll send all this to some lucky winner uh, after the show. But let me go ahead and hit the giveaway button. And tonight's code, tonight's word is sample. Sample is the word. Um, I'm really and sadly our buddy Mike isn't here tonight. Uh, he is taking down. Uh, he's 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 taking down another fantasy, which is the Ren Fair. And um, but he would go berserk right now about the conspiracies around the word sample tonight. So uh, I almost went there. I almost went there just in yeah. honor. But well, you can. Feel free to. Feel free. I, I, I know. I, I like to. I like to indulge your your conspiracy thoughts about all these things and how exa exhaustive the things I have and all my machinations. So please, but yeah, type the word "sample" into the chat tonight, and you'll be entered to win. I will pull a winner in the stream uh, and the like. Uh, last thing, last uh, best way to support us is through Patreon. Um, it helps us. Uh, it helps us um, keep the show going. It helps me um, compensate people, bring in guests. It helps us. Uh, our next big bill is our podcast fees. I got to do the podcast hosting. People love the podcast, guys. Like, I, we're getting like 20 downloads a day. So it's a steady. Nice. It's, it's a steady. It's a pretty steady number. Like when the episode new episode comes up, you get a nice little spike. I went to uh, actually at OrgaCon um, after the, uh, that Saturday night. I checked the numbers and I had like 200 downloads that night. So like I just because I talk about the show and people like check out the podcast, that's cool. If you so, it's a great way. It's a great accessibility way for us too to make sure if you don't want to watch it on YouTube or Twitch, you can also just put it on the podcast. You can play at different speeds. So uh, it's a, it's a great thing. But that's our next big bill, and uh, your support through Patreon or Kofi or whichever mechanism helps out with all that to us to keep on bringing this to you. So, anything else be, before I shut up and run the credits? Good. Uh Hey, I'll be in UK Games Expo. So if anybody wants to talk about the Expanse and you're in the UK, I'll be at the Catan booth. Come say hello. Are you gonna be the Catan booth? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. We, 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 yeah. It's so no, but yeah, it's it's uh, where wherever Catan is, 
Donna tends right to when follow. you walk in the door, yeah. you walk right in the door, and we're right there. You can't, and you can't miss Donna. You just gotta, you just gotta follow the, 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 the glow of like awesomeness. You'll, you'll, you can't miss Donna. <laughs> like Donna's a great Donna. Like you walk into when, if Donna's doing the greeting at the door, it's, it's like you're just like sucked in by the welcomeness. <laughs> um, you, you just get absorbed by it, so it's a lot of fun. But uh, very cool. I look, I look forward to hearing about that and seeing some pictures. I always love seeing your pictures too, of you on the road or on the in the sky. So, all right, guys. Well, we're gonna go ahead and kick off uh, our show here real quick. We will be right back after our opening credits. You guys have arrived on the surface of Mundos. Uh, your heavy shuttle has landed. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff on it to bring into the colony. It's going to have to be loaded out. You guys, have, you know, you put waxer on it. Uh, that's kind of his job. Uh, and the local colony has a few people that are helping to set up the kind of do a staging of the materials that are to come off to the uh, come into uh, Mason's Haven. Um, a lot of you have been put on a cart. You're driving in. Uh, you're being uh, you're riding alongside with. Uh, Janet Keith, who is the head of the colony here, uh, they're the administrator of it, uh, at least on the ground. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, what uh, did you guys start to see kind of going over the night IV? You can kind of it's a little bumpy right at points, but the thing compensates fairly well. Uh, you can kind of see these giant like veins of it kind of coming out. They're about yay thick or so. Um, and they kind of they kind of come in and out of the ground here. Sometimes you can't even see where they're coming out of They're so thick. Um, but it varies all over, and it's this, uh, based on the light you can see, it's this kind of darkish. Um, maybe it has a slight, like, a slight, like, almost like kind of turquoise, like, to the darkness on the edges of it, but it's not a glow by it's just imagination. It doesn't have, it doesn't have like, a bioluminance or anything. Um, but yeah, uh, but aside from that, there's, like, maybe some hills here and there, some formations, but no, like, um, there are some, like, kind of, like, quasi- like you're guessing plant tree analogs, not really sure what they are, but they kind of spout out on occasion. But they look kind of like a, uh, imagine like a paintbrush, but like it kind of goes up and it kind of flops down, like a kind of a lamppost situation, but it's like, a, it looks kind of like a uh, a much darker, like a dark uh, paintbrush kind of shape. But that's about the only other thing you see out there. Uh, the wildlife stayed clear and the, the night is completely dark. You guys can't see much, uh, just stars, uh, the nebulas, you can see some, there are some of the planets in the distance you can see, and you're pretty sure you can spot um, the Jersey Kinross up there uh, that's that's up in orbit. Um, so, but Janet there, and then Janet has a body, uh, has a security uh, officer who's driving the cart, so. Did you guys want to bring anything from, anything special with you guys specifically? The cart can handle a few things, if you want to bring anything special. Um. I'll just bring my Pistol and then Remy's knife. Okay, you got the you got the trench knife. You got the pistol. No problem. Okay. Uh, yeah. Does um does our uh do our drones? Their drones are zero G. Old? They're, they're zero G. Only. Zero, okay. Yeah, they're, they right. only have thrusters. They don't have like propellers. Okay. Yeah, they're like the one is like three meters in diameter. It's it's <laughs> it would not last long <laughs> under gravity. <laughs> it might be able to flounder a little bit, but it, it's not going to do much for you. Uh, but they do have drones back there. If you if you do need a drone, okay. they do have like small like small like camera drones. So these are more what we think of in our current society as, as drones, um, but they're not the big space drones. Yeah. Right. Okay. We'll just, I guess, just regular old weapons. Okay. Just got your you got your stun gun, or your, yep. your taser. Okay. Cool. Uh, maybe a baton with you. 
Uh, Zanny, I know, is never long without old reliable there. Hey. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Well, you guys, uh, you guys, and as you can see, the only light you really see, uh, aside from in the distance horizon, you can kind of see like the edge of like the light of the sun because the place is locked, it is tightly locked to the sun here in the Aether system. But you can see that there's a light where the um, the colony is, and it's it's pretty well lit. They have like floodlights up and everything, and you can also see the lake they're near. Um, and you notice that the uh, the night ivy kind of starts to abate as they get closer to the uh, the water the water out there. This is kind of the edge of the night ivy. All right. Uh, so Janet's driving and she goes, "Yeah." So um, uh, I mean, she's like, "It's not much to look at, but it's 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 still fascinating." It's it's very fascinating. I do have a question though. Yeah, sure. Like the 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 giant creatures that. You guys have the break, oh, uh, break of sources? Yeah, where are they at in correlation well, to where we're at? She, she kind of points out to the deeper parts. Like, she's like, they usually are out there. They don't come too far out to our area. We actually haven't, um, the we haven't actually seen them leave the the area of the night ivy. Uh, we're not sure if they feed off of it or if they're symbiotic with it. We're, we're not sure exactly what's going on with them. We haven't tried to capture one or try to like, we haven't, we haven't tried to kill one or, or capture one or we're not even sure how to subdue one. Um, but we're not, I mean, we're, we really are not too sure about them. Um, it's a little, um, they don't have, I don't, we've told you, they don't have eyes or like, we don't know which way they face. They kind of, um, uh, we, we kind of, our write-up kind of described them like, a, and she basically goes through and shows you the write-up and shows you like an image on a data pad. And basically like, the best way to describe one is like, it's like a brontosaurus with no head and no tail, and it can walk in any direction at any time. But it's unclear, there's no like, they don't, they don't see any sensory organs on it. Like, they're not sure if they're even breathing. Um, or if they are, they can't see it. Yeah, they're like, she's like, no, it's a, definitely a puzzle, but I think we're more, and, and as interesting as that is, I think we're more concerned with the, um, the night ivy at this point. Uh, that seems to be, how do I put it? Uh, the keystone species here. But I think if we can understand that, we can understand everything else quite quickly. So is that the only two species you know of that are here oh, right no, now? We, just... we, we've picked up a few dozen microbes with many more we need to catalog. Um, there's a small type of like kind of quasi rodent that's eyeless also. Um, we, we're still debating a name for those ones. Uh, we Some people are calling them the night gophers. I don't think, I hope that doesn't stick. I don't know. I like that. I think that's a good one. I think we should she, keep that. She actively it's rolls pretty catchy. Her, she actively rolls her eyes when you say that shit. Uh, <laughs> like she does not like Night Gopher. I think oh, Sandy's oh. mimicking the exact same like I was like both sides of of these me and and this person just rolling their eyes at the same time. Hey, you know, if uh, we catch one of these things, we could take it back to the ship and have a pet. So. Oh, if it, yeah. If it could survive. Do think this is going to do an zero G. That's what's that we're going to experiment for science. We'll figure it out. I don't know. We'll make it, it work. The other name there's so they're called night gophers or ivy moles. Um, I like the night gophers. I also, I also feel like if there, if there ever is a high school on this planet, their mascot will be the night gophers. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, and they're basically they're burrowing eyeless creatures about the size of a groundhog. Um, and they do seem to feed on the night ivy somehow. They, they get nutrients from us, from the roots. They, they burrow underground and feed, and they come up once in a while for whatever reason. Um, There's a lot of stuff going on with this night ivy. I'm very fascinated by it, too. I mean, I don't understand any of this stuff whatsoever, but it's very fascinating. Well, and, and, she, and she takes a second and she goes, you know, but I mean, well, at least we understand it's probably a, key st a keystone species, meaning that everything's dependent upon it. So if it falls apart, the whole ecosystem will probably fall apart. So um, that's why it's crucial for us to understand. And uh, we've taken some samples of it and looked through it and even uh, filtered out some of the water coming, because it does seem to flow water quite a bit, but oh, we're still getting there. But uh, hey, look, uh, you know, aside from all that, yeah. um, we're looking back to get in the colony. We have your own, we have our own bunk for you. So basically have like a prefab building that you guys all could share that has like eight bunks in it, it has its own shower, its own um, bathroom type thing. Um, uh, you know, it has like, kind of like mobile curtains and everything like that with a workstation, like a, not a lab, but like a, if you need to use a computer console type thing, you can do, do stuff there. Uh, but they have that all reserved for you guys to share. It's honestly, um, 
it's it's actually probably more space than you guys have on the Sinclair, to be honest. Um, but it's a little it's a little like a transport container type thing converted into this, yeah. So they have like, and you can see that when you, as you approach the camp, you can see they probably have like two dozen of these things around. But the biggest thing as you approach the camp, you can see is the what you're guessing is the hydroponic station. Um, they have a large like water pump. They have like a whole system there. You can see that they have this kind of glass. Um, it looks kind of like a greenhouse, but it doesn't really function as a greenhouse because there's no sunlight here. But it's a hydroponic system. It's all lit, and they have like um, uh, various uh, what they call like like full spectrum LEDs there and everything to keep stuff alive. So it, it, it's definitely the most power intensive uh, system they have. But you can see all of it as they're kind of come up. They're kind of a quasi town square. Uh, but you can see people kind of like waving down as you guys approach and everything. There's people who are busy, some people are doing it, but there's probably, you know, a few dozen people here easily, probably like 50, 60 people here. I'll tell you what, I'm ready for potatoes. Oh, she's like, yeah, well, it's definitely, it's, it's definitely a delicacy of, uh, moon, of Mason's Haven, I'll say that. So they, they roll on up and, um, you guys get out and people are like waving, hey, and this like, and you know, you can see, um, Janet kind of gets up and waves at everybody and, she goes, uh, well, hey, welcome to Mason's Haven. Uh, you folks helped build this. You guys helped uh, make this all happen. Uh, gave us a second chance. Many of the Martians here uh, were part of uh, Representative Gal's district back on Mars, and uh, they got out before things got bad. So uh, right now we understand Mars ain't doing so well economically, but uh, we got a fresh start here, and a lot of us, um, a lot of people here appreciate it. It's kind of a... Um, Mason Haven has been a second chance for a lot of us. That's awesome. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, as we can tell just from the two of us, it's it's nice to uh, not be looking at shooting each other as <laughs> we both used to do years ago. Well, I don't think, I, I think if we're going to, if people are shooting each other down here, it's, uh, we're not going to last much, last very long um, and the like. <laughs> Um, Zenny, the, the ride ends and you, you kind of, you get off and you kind of have to stand up again here. And it, it's definitely dis, disorienting, um, the mm -hmm. gravity here and such. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, the nausea is still there, but it's not like, uh, it's still there. It's just not, uh, it's not debilitating. I'll say that. Okay. Um, Zenny's probably walking like they have a hangover. <laughs> Gravitational hangover. Um, you so got like it kind of slow kind of squinty a mm. little bit um trying to it, trying to limit the amounts of like sensory inputs <laughs> at least there's no sunlight uh you have that going for you so there's no yeah. direct sunlight so it is it is nighttime you can see the stars and there are lights from like like the different way they have the colony lit up but um you can kind of avoid them somewhat you know where they are um you are um uh janet does say uh so i'd like you to uh meet alicia navarro and this other woman comes over, another Martian woman, uh, kind of a, she's got kind of a tan complexion, uh, dark hair comes up and uh, she's wearing like a lab coat and she says, uh, hello, uh, Captain Myrtle, uh, uh, Officer Officer Pazal, Officer Thompson. Um, welcome to Mason's Haven. Well, um, thanks you. for having us. Hey, we're, we're happy to be here. No problem. And she goes and she she pulls. She has this like case with her. She brings it out and it's like a, like like a tackle box type thing and opens it up and says, um, "Well, here's your here's your regiments uh, for being uh, planet side." Or, or what? Your regiments. Um, well, the Zenny uh, knows what they are. I'm assuming they're they're just more gravity drugs. Is that right? Uh, she, well, she kind of she. Do you want to say that to her or something like that? No, that's what Zenny's okay. like assuming. Um, well, she goes, uh, well, she's, uh, unfortunately, our gravity treatments are only part of the solution to living down here. Um, so Mundos has a very high oxygen based um, atmosphere and you need to take a regiment of extra antioxidants uh, daily. Um, it'll cause you might get some problems with your eyes if you don't take them. Um, um, it, it's, it's hell on your skin. So, so there's a lot of vitamin D in there too, since we're going to be not seeing sunlight for a while. Yeah, well, the full spectrum lights will, will can compensate for that to some degree, but yeah, that's, by all means, yeah, yeah there's, there's it's all the supplements you need to stay on here. But um, this tackle box should have enough uh, for the well, the four. I guess your other your other guy is still unloading. Yeah. Um, but you, you'll be fine for you know you guys are fine right now. But just make just know that your your body's antioxidants will be depleted quite quickly if you don't 
pick up on the supplements. Just out of curiosity, where did these uh, supplements come from? Well, we synthesized them in our chem deck. Excellent. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's like, no, this is like, they, they figured this stuff out early on, and um, they have like a, you're, you can see one of the places is definitely a lab, and they can probably synthesize basic drugs. Antioxidants are pretty easy to make. This isn't some... I, I didn't make up antioxidants, uh, Scott. They're a real thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all over my water bottles. Indoor plumbing? Uh, How dare you? <laughs> Don't indulge me in your fantasy, sir. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's like they have like, like supplements here and everything. Uh, I'll take your drugs, lady. Yeah. She's an adult. You have to trust her. Um, okay. But yeah, you... <laughs> you uh, Yeah, she does give them up. And, um, and you, you've seen the name Elisa Navarro, Navarro pop up on the... Um, in the dossier for this place, too. So she's a Martian. Oh, sorry. Yeah, she's a Martian. Uh, Janet Keith is a Martian. Um, most you're noticing probably 80 to 90 percent of people here on the ground are Martian. But, he said, uh, well, yeah. Um, well, she goes, well, why don't you guys take those on back to your uh, your your bunk over there? Uh, and you can see it's like the they call them the bunks, but they're like it's a bunkhouse slash bunker kind of thing. Um, they're not armored, but you do notice one thing about them is that they kind of ad hoc uh, encase them in polymer. So like they're they're encased in plastic versus like being the raw metal. Um, it looks like it's been added on or kind of just like plated on there. Yeah. Um, but she's why don't you guys go get set up and uh, take a moment and uh, in about uh, she looks to Janet. Janet, what time are we down to dinner? She, uh, Janet says uh, about an hour. We're gonna have we're gonna have a dinner. Why don't you guys come on out to the mess hall? And she points to another another way. He's like prefab buildings. It's really hard to tell them all apart because they all look the fuck the same. <laughs> like <laughs> they're all the same color. They just have different names on them, uh, different positions. Uh, the only one that really stands out is the hydroponics lab, and and the actual lab's got a few extra like uh, doohickeys sticking out the top of it. So, um, but otherwise that they all look pretty much the same. Have you ever been like you ever go to camp as a kid, or you go to a camp and like all the there's just a row after row of cabin looks identical. It's kind of like that. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she goes, well, that one's you, and uh, it's all your guys. Uh, you guys have the the key. Uh, we make sure that she sends over, like, your data pads ding as she sends over, like, security clearances. Uh, you guys have the clearance board and everything like that, too. Feel free to store what you want to in there. Um, but if you need any help in the meantime, uh, go ahead and get my, my assistant. Um, let's see here. Who is her assistant? Her assistant will be... Uh, Michael, uh, we'll call him Taconis, Taconis. And he is a Martian. Yeah, if you need, uh, if you need anything, call up Michael and she gives you his, his information and, uh, he's good to go, so. I, I think we should go check out our, uh, our new digs. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Um, anything, Zane, before you go into the new digs? Um, no. Um, Zenny's like really, really second guessing this whole thing after being told that literally the air that's here could damage us. <laughs> it. Oh, no, uh, she's pretty silent. It's so, yeah. Uh, it's actually change. for for Zenny. It's actually a lot of oxygen. It, it's actually almost like uh, borderline euphoric type, like amounts of oxygen. Like you feel like much more. There's a bit different awareness here too, but um, you do know that they could probably have drugs that uh, counter that for the most part too. So there is some some help there, but yeah, not uh, not the best. Right, but no, Zenny's Zenny's kind of just following these two. Uh, a little bit to try to it's trying not to engage with anything basically at all <laughs> it's not <laughs> feeling great it does not want to engage <laughs> you got you got you have new planet jet lag gotcha all right so you you guys go into the bunk and it's pretty wide it's 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 probably um probably like uh 20 feet wide or so uh you can see the different like bunks in each corner so it looks like there's like two bunks per uh two beds per corner um, you can see in the back is the bathroom. Uh, between the bunks is kind of like a little work area. The one looks like a small kind of like multi-purpose area. You can, you can put it wherever you want there. The other side is more of like an office. 
Um, and then each bunk has like a, a set of like lockers, uh, a pair of lockers, one you're guessing for each person on a bunk. Um, and then there's kind of a common area. It's got the chairs, a table, view screen, stuff like that. Um, and the light too. But the interior is metal, the outside is plastic. Um, there it is. You can you can hear the scrubbers going too. Um, the environment in here is actually a little bit easier to, it's not quite at that, that high oxygen amount. It looks like they're mitigating it here inside the buildings quite a bit. They kind of have, uh, they're, they're actually pumping more CO2 into the area than normal. Like they're actually pumping in more nitrogen, stuff like that, versus uh, it trying to bait the amount of oxygen that's in the air. I'm gonna find the closest, lowest bunk. First one to the left. And lay down. All right, bottom. <laughs> just, immediate, just immediately yeah. head over there and lay down. First one to the left, bottom you go and you just kind of go up there. There's even a curtain, you can even pull the curtain if you want to. No, I just want. I, I don't think. I don't think they're they're thinking that far ahead. They're just like I need to be not stand. I need to be horizontal right now. <laughs> you, you get horizontal and you can feel like your system kind of reacclimate a little bit. It's it's it feels a lot easier being that way. Uh, you can feel like mm -hmm. the the blood come back to your brain a little bit more. You're a little more aware. Um, like some of the euphoric kind of elements kind of start wearing off a little bit here and there. Um, yeah. So it's it's it feels a lot nicer to be. And it's actually a pretty comfortable mattress, all things considered. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but the um, the, the one thing is uh, you you do instinctually as you lay down and reach for the strap for the bed and there's mm -hmm. no strap for the bed. Uh, yeah, Zenny will kind of let out let out a fairly loud, just like uh, a long extended exhale. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, from where yeah. they're at. Um, arm across their eyes. Okay. So yeah, you um uh, what about you uh uh I'm gonna go straight to the common room. Okay. I mean it's it's, it's and, well the whole thing is one room. Well, well yes, one, one room yeah, I'm gonna go with curtains over there. and dividers. It's it's like calling it like rooms is yeah very abstract yeah. idea. Um, <laughs> well I'm gonna go to the common area. Okay. And uh, find the most comfortable looking seat I can. They all look equally uncomfortable. I'm going to sit on one of them right. just out of randomness. I mean, it it kind of reminds you of hotel furniture. You know, it's it's comfortable enough. Um, but yeah, you, you stick a seat in the chair, no problem. And it's got like that kind of uh, plastic padding and stuff like that, but it works. And you stick a seat there and there's a table. And, um, you know, they, they do have, there is like a refrigerator in here. Um, by the, out by the bathroom area, there's kind of like a refrigerator setup type thing there, um, a sink out there that is inside, like the more private kind of shower, bath, like toilet combo type thing. Um, but yeah, it, um, you can check all that stuff too, and uh, you can put down whatever you want. Um, who, I'm going to put on. Oh, go ahead, oh, sorry. Oh, who's carrying the tackle box full of the the regiment? Oh, I had that. I think. Are you just yeah. put on the table you want to just put in the middle of the room. Yeah, just because I don't know what to do with them, per se. It, it, um, I, I will say this: they they did not give you drugs without directions. They they were there's probably directions inside the box. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Better be pictures. I don't I don't want to try. Have to read yes, this. they are they are in picture form. If you would like them in picture form, they are they are more yes. more happy to have them in picture. Form. But I would like to also find that the 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 monitor, the TV, okay. whatever, yeah, and then I'm right gonna there. put. I'm gonna try to put as much of that wrestling stuff that we had we got from uh, Hank and okay. just have it playing 24 hours so you, a day. So you you go ahead and you pull the rest of all the wrestling footage you have, and you have some in your data pad. But uh, you go ahead and get into it, and you link it up to the Sinclair, and the Sinclair starts beaming down um, into their network, using up their network traffic to push around the variety of uh, wrestling footage that you. Uh, so, so endearingly love. The way I started watching wrestling, um, you guys got like, you know, like, you know, 45 minutes to hang out. Myrtle, what about you? Um, I'm just gonna kind of chill. I'm feeling really weird about being on a planet again mm -hmm. since it's been like so long. You know, and then, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, it's like these creatures and this weirdness of you know, what it was like, you know, when weird mm -hmm. stuff was all over the earth, 
You know, so I'm just kind of in my head. Just... Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's that whole thing, you know, coming from a whole family of explorers and the whole thing with the past and all that stuff and mm. the good, the bad, and the ugly of, you know, settling in a new place and colonizing a place. Yeah, understandable. I think, I think in this weird, this weird kind of like quiet moment, which I assume lasts for a little bit. Zenny from their bunk arm flopped over their face will say did we make the right choice making all this happen why, why would you think that I learned a long time ago that if some place is trying to do me harm or kill me it's not a place I want to stay I see, what, I see what you're saying. Um, we definitely didn't make the right, or we did, we made the right choice. Yeah, so far so good. You haven't puked yet, have you? If I did, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if we're here long enough, we can go. Uh, maybe scout those giant. What were they called again? Brachiosaurus or something? Yeah. We can call them Brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus. I'm happy with the Brachies. I'm, I'm just going to. Brachies. Well, I I remember the name. Of it. I was just trying to make Wyatt not act like you know. <laughs> we'll come up with a different name every time. But you know, anyways, we could. Uh, I would really like to go see one of those. Maybe that'll help change your mind a little bit. Uh, you know, I mean. It's it's difficult, you know, because it's it's amazing, you know, what's happening here and there's a lot of feel good in trying to get all of our people to work together to have a place of peace. Um maybe so, that's where it's different then cuz if you're feeling good about all these people working together, that's fine. That's great. That's a positivity I think that we need, but I look at all these people out there and I'm just waiting for something to go wrong. I'm waiting for them to turn on each other. I'm waiting for somebody to, to start shooting at us. I'm waiting for something. All the buildings fall over. The sky starts falling. You know, these brachiosaur or whatever they're called. <laughs> come trips in through here that this night ivy just it gets up and moves or dies overnight so it's kind of hard to see that hopefulness yeah it's, it's like you know kind of a tentative it, it sounds really good and i think you know from you know we've, we've been talking to people back and forth for so long and you know it seems like everything is progressing but as we know is like things there's always something you know so i don't want us to get you know just too relaxed about it and there's still so much we don't know but like what do you said what are those brekkies uh what if somebody pisses it off what if some you know who knows what happens and then then there's all that stuff that we don't even know out there in that wacky ass lily pad in the sky forest you know so it's like we have to i think that we really ought to pay attention i mean i know science scientists are gonna science and you know i almost feel like our influence is like We've seen what's happened with that protomolecule stuff and how crazy those people got. And and Pope, you know, we still got Pope we have to think about. And it's all like, I'm not worried about us. But I worry about everybody who's not us. And so maybe we'll have a good influence on the people here. I hope, you know, 
because of our crew and our family and but I don't know. I'm 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 gonna be all nice to everybody and you know be out there, but I have I'm not forgetting the feeling that you're having, and I'm not forgetting the feeling that any of us are having on this. And I have to say it, hopes involved, so I can't trust everybody. So we'll do our best and you know, make it work the best we can. If not, at least we can leave. That's true. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. I don't know where we'd go, but somebody would take us, you know? Somebody would want to know what we know. Zanny, your your data pad pings. It's a you have a, it's it's Pull from a um, data pad and like move one eye so I can see <laughs> from under my arm. From Yan. And it, there's no text, it's just an image. It's just an image. You want to open the image? I take my arm down and yeah, I'll open okay. it. So it's just, it's a picture of him. Like, in, it's a picture of him giving a thumbs up with a handwritten sign in front of the um, the place that you guys reload the PDCs. Mm -hmm. And it's saying, do I need to rain hell on anybody? And it seems <laughs> like he's just trying to be funny. Trying to cheer, he probably knows you're, you're depressed down there, so he's trying to cheer you up. Um... In his own weird way. Yeah. Uh, I think there is like a very, a very slight chuckle from Zenny, um, and they'll take a, <laughs> they'll take a quick selfie of them just sticking their tongue out at the camera, and um, we'll just message. No. Dot dot dot. Not no. yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you guys, you guys hang out for a while. Uh, get acclimated to the area. It's actually pretty nice. Um, <clears throat> it works out pretty well. So this would be good. You got enough room here for waxer. Uh, you'll think you'll fit into one of these things. Um, he'll have to, he'll have to kind of, like, you know, go Pythagoras on it when he gets into bed, but then can, <clears throat> you know, jut himself into one of these bunks. Um, but uh, yeah, you, uh, you guys, the hour passes, and it, it, the you can, you know, the dinner bells, you know, not exactly ringing, but there's like the dinner time. Ain't no time. You guys, you guys want to come on out or? Oh yeah. Let's right. go get some potatoes. So you march on out, come across the dirt and people are kind of moving around doing it. Some people are saying, hey, how's it going? You know, they're waving at you. They're pretty friendly. Uh, some are poke, pointing at you, like, oh man, that's, you know, that's them. Uh, it seems like everybody knows who you are. This uh, makes Zenny even more <laughs> uncomfortable. Zenny's not used to anybody knowing who they are. <laughs> Um, let me get, I'm going to have, I'm going to have Wyatt roll here. I don't know what, Wyatt, Ooh. roll some dice. Just roll 3d6 and tell me what you get. Just, tell me, just roll 3d6 and tell me what you get. I don't even care. We're not rolling for anything. Well, we're rolling for something, but you don't know what it is. In. In. Okay. You're walking past one of these, one of these Martian guys. And like, you can walk past him and you know, you're pretty sure like, you know, this guy, you remember seeing him like on a wanted report. Uh, years and years back when you were in the service. So, I mean, we're talking like 25 years ago, maybe 30 years ago, you saw this guy, like, like he was part of some sort of uh, criminal enterprise back on Mars. You're not, you, uh, do you want to try to recall what it was or do you want to go talk to him? I would, I would like to try to recall what it was. Okay, give me a current affairs test, an intelligence current affairs. Oh, double sixes. That's pretty good. Uh, 12, 15, 16, 18. Okay. With double sixes. Yeah, he was part of some. Uh, basically, there were some people uh, synthesizing uh, like drug, like basically synthesizing combat drugs uh, and black market selling them on on Mars. Um, and and these were largely being sold to veterans that like were off those combat drugs and they couldn't get access to them or anything like, anything like that. And this guy was part of the ring that was synthesizing them and everything like that, and selling them. Um, you remember them getting busted? Um, and, and a few of the guys were even insiders in the military. You think you, you can't remember if this guy was inside the military or not, but he was basically like a drug manufacturer back on Mars like decades ago. Um, his name will be, um, I'll give him a fun name here. Uh, we'll call him Lauren uh, Olson is his name. And what was he doing when I walked past him? He's just walking. Yeah. I mean, he was just—he kind of nodded to you guys, going, "Hey, how's it going?" And, you know, friendly guy, and he's like in his like fifties, sixties. He's he's older, um, right. but he's middle aged. You know, 
I would like to just, you know, lock on to him more or less. Yep. And anytime I see him, just kind of okay. take a moment to see what he's doing. And this was just like a Martian story. Like, you don't expect your Earth or friends to know anything about this. It was just kind of a mm. local business. Yeah, I'm keeping this to myself. Yeah. And like, you heard about when you were in the academy type thing. All right. Um, but you come on into the mess hall. Mess hall is pretty active. They got about like uh, 12 people in there right now. Uh, Janet's there along with Alicia and then their assistant uh, Michael's there. I don't know if you other people kind of cone in and out. There's like a, there's someone cooking up stuff um, and you can smell it smells pretty good. Like they actually have like like real moisture in the air and like uh, it, it smells like a real kitchen, like a full blown um, like mess hall. Yes. So it definitely reminds you a bit of like your your basic service back on Earth. Uh, Myrtle when you're like going through basic um, reminds you a bit of like the actual mess halls on Mars stuff like that so like open pots of boiling water type stuff right which you can only guess it's full of potatoes um, so yeah they you come on in and they uh, they go hey come on in come on in I will find the empty seat yeah there's plenty of empty seat they, the thing is, so this is all built to scale up they're only at right now with the number of buildings they have they're at maybe a quarter capacity so there's plenty of space in here like they're they're really they're waiting for more people to come down. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you get a free seat. You go in and get a free seat. You just want to sit down, and they're like, Janet's going, "Oh, well, welcome, welcome. Hey, um, uh, don't sit down too fast. Like, if you would like to have you guys share some of our grub, like, I mean, I I think it's only right. And we kind of I think it's only right that the crew, of the Sinclair, that's made all this happen for so many people, give us so many of us a second chance to um have the first have the first bite tonight, right? That's all good. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll graciously accept that offer. Okay. We don't know how to act around people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they, they go up and they go, okay, well, uh, let me go show you what we've been growing here. All this is, we're, we try to make an all local thing. We didn't try to bring down any of our supplements. So if the flavor's off a little bit, let us know. We got some flavor we can add to it, but we'll try to go with our best. All right. So first up Zenny's, is... As an aside, before, yes. like, Zenny's suspicion meter has, like, skyrocketed. And so, like, they're, they're coming along, but is, like, really trying to, is, like, actively trying to find the shit that people are trying to hide. Okay. Um, so Janet kind of comes up and says, all right, well, uh, we have, and there's, like, the whole, like, plate of potatoes, like, baked potatoes there. And she goes, we got baked potatoes, and we have, uh... What we've been trying to work on, we're still getting it tweaked here a little bit, but we have a soy-based buttery spread. It's a soy-based okay. butter. Uh, we're, get, we're getting close to getting the flavor right. Um, our guy in the back's doing all right with it. Uh, he used to work. Uh, she's like, you know, I, and she kind of she kind of leans into Myrtle. She's like, look, I, you know, I'm not gonna tell you the Martians have the best palate, but we're getting, we're trying our best, okay? So she's, all right, it's all she right. Kinda, she kind of t- does this kind of dig on her people type thing, you know. Um, you know, we don't know, you know, we, we, we don't know how to flavor things type, you know, type thing, but, <laughs> um, and, but she's kind of, you know, playing her off and she gets, she goes out and says, yeah, so grab a plate, grab, uh, grab a mess kit there and, uh, have at it. And there's like a few other things on the menu too. It looks like they've, um, most of it's soy based. So they have like some tofu kind of setups there too. Um, so they're kind of like protein supplemental stuff like that too, but they look like they try to focus on mostly stuff that's made out of soy and stuff that's potato based. Um, and uh, Janet says, and uh, she's like, don't worry, it's like, after you guys finish your meal, we got, uh, I got one one special lab project I've been working on too. We'll, we'll, we'll partake of that. All right, sounds great. I'll grab me a plate. Yeah, I'll follow. I start setting up alien soil or alien hydroponic, hydroponically grown potatoes from an alien world is what we're doing tonight. Let's put that out there. This is, this is how wild this stuff is. <laughs> um, and so you kind of start putting that together and you can butter it up. You can make it however you want. Um, they have, they do have some flavors there. So if you want kind of salted or you want, like they have the extra stuff there for you. Um, but you can go and mosey it on up there and take partake. And they have like water to drink uh, primarily. There's like some um, kind of like uh, powdered stuff to add to the water if you want to flavor it up, you know, kind of flavored water type of thing. It's not, it's not Kool-Aid, but you know what I'm saying? That kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Speaking of being suspicious about drinking the Kool Aid, uh, Denny, mm-hmm. what, um, <laughs> what, uh, what, uh, let me segue into that. Uh, it's are you, me. 
Captain Suspicious. That's what like that's that's the title <laughs> I'm going for. Captain Suspicious. Don't behavior. be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. So, uh, is there? Do you want to partake in this food, or do you want to? Wanna... Suspicious. Um, not at first. And if anybody asks, I'm gonna play. Like, I'll take a little bit on like a plate. Okay. But if anybody asks, like, oh, why aren't you eating or whatever? One, rude. But two, uh, I'll play it off as like, you know, I'm not mm. feeling well, which is not a lie. Not a lie. Um, but no, I'm watching, um, if anyone else is eating, I'm watching how they all react to the food. I'm watching how my crewmates, uh, potentially react, which is a little disconcerting, but, um, yeah, I just, I am, there's, there's this thing that they can't shake of like, Hoping that Pope isn't just using this space as a testing ground for his own shenanigans. Um, and that's like a growing concern. Okay. All right. Good deal. Um, yeah, everybody else eating. Uh, Janet kind of talks it up, asks you kind of how the trip was, how's the Medina station doing. Um, do you, I mean, you guys might tell her about seeing like the wheat fields on the Medina station. She's like, oh, that's I've heard about that mind boggling. They're you know, kind of going on about stuff like that too. Um, more people start coming into the mess hall too, like a few people. That one guy you saw earlier, uh, Lauren Olson, he does come in. Uh, and he, he just comes in and grabs some food, whatever. He's not getting like the fancier stuff you guys are eating, but he's just grabbing some grub real quick, kind of a snack or whatever, just some water, filling out. He waves at people. He seems friendly enough. People seem to know who he is. He, I mean, he seems to belong there. People know who he is. So I'm get. Yeah, I'm, I've... I've... This is going to be out of Wyatt's character, but he starts to relax a little bit mm -hmm. and loses focus on okay. Olsen and just is kind of trying to fully acclimate himself to be here for as long as he can. And yeah, and Zenny, you pick up that like like there's some there's some tension shifts in uh, the EXO. You guys have been around and you each other know like when your spider senses are tingling. And uh, you could tell that his was tingling, but now he's kind of relaxed a little bit. So your intuition picks up on that. But you're welcome to address it or not. It doesn't. It doesn't comfort Zenny as much as it might have in, I don't know, space. Um, but she makes a note of it. Um. But yeah, Janet's like so. So yeah, so Myrtle. So I mean, you and Navy. I mean, I. I mean, come on, there's not, a, there's not too many Martians alive that, that were in the military that don't know your dad's name. And Cooper holds yeah. a lot of weight. Yeah, there's that. You know? Like, well, that's, you know, that's an age bygone now, by all means. I mean, I, I feel like that's the Earth-Mars stuff is all, you know, they're working it out. They We have this whole uh, horizon ahead of us, so I think that's... And you're on, you're on one of those... Uh, one of the bleeding edges of that horizon, so we're happy to have yeah. you. It was an old man's war, as they say. This is true. This is very true. Um, but look, uh, our, our pressing matter right now is we, we, we're being offered a pretty good uh, reward here, possibly even bringing a whole uh, supply ship on uh, Star's Edge Dime, and we can get that uh, their black box back from that satellite that crashed. Really? Yeah, they're, um, they're offering a pretty fair reward. It looks like they have a pretty decent uh contract with some uh shippers and they're looking uh you know some big sh uh, uh cargo ships and um they have one scheduled out within the next year that could i mean really put us over the top if we can go and but they want this black box with the salad they really want to know it took that thing down um and they don't have anybody over there that can do it <laughs> she's like she kind of laughs for a second she's like uh she looks alicia kind of like alicia who's the head of science kind of like rolls her eyes too and is like Janice, like, um, well, let's put it this way: we're we definitely are doing research here and trying to survive, but we're all most of us here are Martians, and at the very least, went through. I think they call it on Earth like ROTC. Um, we kind of went through like so at least some military training in, in high school and stuff like that too, and some arms training, and did a little bit of service here and there. They're all just like Earth scientists. Uh, a little isolated. They have, a, I guess, they have a small security team, but it's not much. Um, so it's a lot if they trip and stub their toe. 
They'll cry. Yeah. They'll, they'll cry. I mean, they're nice. They're nice. Don't get me wrong. They, they helped us out with the um, and analyzing the, the, the exotic materials by all means. Uh, we got that turn around. We got that turned around real quick. But uh, that they were happy to set this data. But we're um, yeah. They don't have expeditionary expeditionary uh, capabilities like we do. We have carts. They have a few carts, but. I don't think they have a lot of weapons. I don't think they have survival. I don't think they have people as the, we'll say, especially organized and innovative as you and your crew are. Yeah, I'm picking up what you're dropping down there. But yeah, and you can tell that Janet had a little bit of time in the military, but you're, but she's not, she didn't do 20. She didn't do the full time. She probably got like right. pushed off an R&D or something. Or if she was in the military for 20, she was mostly behind a desk, like doing uh, research and development and stuff, so. Bureaucracy. She's a bureaucrat. Uh, so Sorry. Like, What's that? This would be like an expedition into like the complete unknown because nobody's been that way, right? I mean, this was all all of this we're staying on was unknown at one point too. So yeah, but we haven't been able to get past that. Uh, the uh, the lily pads, as we're calling them, that we some of us think it's a rainforest. Some of us think it might be a giant. One person threw out that it might be. Like a giant, what's it called a what's that thing called again? Uh, Alicia, a uh, Venus flytrap, a giant Venus flytrap. Um, whole variety. I mean, it's all theoretical at this point, but we have a ecologist we're, we're interested in sending out there too. Um, but we'd rather send them out with a team that has, um, was it more more on their toe thinking, thinking on their toes a little bit more, a little more. Uh, our, our our guys might get a little too uh, excited. About. You definitely sold me already. You're good. I'm I'm all for <laughs> this idea. I want I want to I want to put my boots down somewhere no one's been. Well, there you go. And that'll be up for you. Yeah. Um. We'll, have, we'll we'll equip you with drones. We can probably drop. We we figure we'd drop a uh, one of the shuttles over there. You guys can uh, either keep the shuttle down on the ground, um, or you can bring it back onto orbit. Just that way, you would have to wait for a pickup from that. But uh, Whatever you guys want to do, uh, we're, we're game to hear it out. Uh, we're hoping to set that expedition up in the next few weeks, honestly. Um, but uh, I would like I, to be a big part of that, uh, setting that up to see how. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I want to see how yeah, you guys go about that. And we'll be happy to equip you with a few of our scientists want to go out there. We have a few of the um, <clears throat> she kind of takes a second. She cleared her throat very clearly. A few of our uh, the bio survey team that was not that did not undergo the treatments. Um, the the our uh, controversial treatments that we're kind of worried about, but um, we, uh, we'll be happy to bring have some of them go with you and uh, help out best they can, give you whatever advice they can. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the more the merrier. Uh, as you stand there, uh, as you sit there talking, uh, Michael, her assistant, comes over and taps on her shoulder and whispers in her ear. He's got like his data pad and shows something. And she goes, "Oh." Um, She's like, he's like, they're outside, and he's like, yeah, they they showed up. Uh, okay, uh, well, look, uh, we have some unannounced visitors. Um, How's that possible? Rudeness? It just she kind of says, she says, jokingly rudeness, like you know. Where are um, they from? Uh, it's it's a delegation from Star's Edge. Uh, Zenny gets up and starts moving out. Okay, and wow. um. Oh. You can, you start getting up, and uh, Alicia and Janet get up, and Michael's uh, behind them, and uh, she goes, uh, "Yeah, she's like, um, okay, this wasn't expected. Um, well, look, they're nice people. The, the the teams are always good. The science teams are, are always good. Um, but it looks like they're not playing around. It looks like uh, Doctor Arn is going to be here today. Um, you, if you want to, if you want to reference, uh, I'll, I'll then you would know this name." Uh, because you've 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 delved into stars, you had you had a few months to to, to poke at people's records, and I'm sure you would have poked. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> I don't mean to play your character for you, but Daddy seems like a poker. Uh, <laughs> um, so, Doctor Caroline Ann is the chief of research and development for Star's Edge. This is the head of the on the ground place, uh, and she is an Earther. Dr. Arn, yeah. Uh, 
Um, so do you have any idea why they're here? Like why they came here? Um, well, according to the communication that Michael uh, got for me, they're here to, well, they're going to return the sample. What sample? Oh, well, you know, I remember a few months back, uh, you, we found the weird samples in the hydroponics, the, the broken down yeah, materials. Yeah. Um, well, we were waiting, we were hoping to get like the spectral analysis analyzer from you guys, but uh, our, we got a little impatient and we asked Star's Edge and they were happy to use theirs and provide us the data analysis of it. Um, but it seems like they're ready to bring back the sample. And she's like, it's not much. It's, it's like, it's, she's like, it's just like a little test tube full of stuff. It's not much. Yeah, I definitely want to hear what they have to say, honestly. Like, I mean, it's, it's good on them too. I mean, that stuff's got it back home. That's got to be worth millions. Oh yeah, easily. So, um, I should also mention this was the the sample material you guys promised to send back to Prax. Oh, okay. Yeah, just remember, oh, yeah. you guys you guys owe Prax and Ganymede. <laughs> uh, you don't, well, you don't owe them, but like you you kind of told me to help them out a little bit here. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, but you, uh, she's like, uh, Janet and Elisa kind of look at each other like, all right, go deal with it, and they they walk out. They go to walk out the door with Michael. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna have, if you have intuition, I'm not gonna have you roll it. Uh, but if you have, I do. If you have intuition, it's a plus I six. Do. Yeah, you, I have intuition too. Okay, so the two of the two security members, the, the XO and the second officer both think, this is way too coincidental that these people showed up this, this night at this time. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah, yeah. Zenny's got like, the the strap of the pistol like that holds it in it's it's ready and it's ready and waiting <laughs> you, you didn't you didn't you didn't you didn't it's not tightened down. i'm not holding it but it's not tightened down. but it is yeah oh yeah it's easily accessible it's easily accessible okay um, all right so yeah they're apparently they're going outside to go meet these people do you guys want to follow up oh i i was already oh, yeah, standing up and okay, heading out i was just, heading out before yeah, they yeah. were yeah. heading out you, out you see this this like multi-threaded cart so the carts they have here they work they're pretty basic they're easy to repair and fix up this one it has like treads um and it, it's like a much more advanced it's got some sensor sets on it it's a much more scientifically based vehicle much more advanced than what uh mason's haven has and you can see out there, there's like they're talking to a few people. Um, you can see a, a woman in like what well, looks to you're guessing she's the leader. You're guessing this is probably Dr. Caroline uh, Zenny. You would know from the photos. Um, she's got her hair kind of shortened, uh, kind of tied with like a kind of a top knot at, at the back of it. Uh, she has like um, it looks like kind of rock climbing gear. It's a little fashionable, a little more like field work oriented. Um, they are with, uh, she's with uh, three other people. Uh, you're guessing two of them are science members, and the third one is looks like a guard uh, who is wearing, like actively wearing like security armor. Um, but he doesn't have his weapons drawn. He doesn't have like a rifle slung. Although you imagine their cart probably has like a rifle in it somewhere or something. But he definitely has like a sidearm, uh, stun, like a stun baton type stuff. Yeah, he, he's like a security officer. But he's not like he doesn't seem like he seems relaxed. He doesn't seem like he's on edge about anything. I'll be, I'll, I'll mirror him. I'll be as relaxed as I can be. And uh, she sees when she sees Janet, she goes, up, she goes up, to, and Caroline goes, oh, Janet, how are you doing? And Janet's like, oh, quite well, actually. You picked a hell of a night to come by here, Caroline. And she's like, please, Doctor Arn. But um, it's not, you know, we figured it was time uh, for us to return uh, what we borrowed from you. And uh, we thank you for letting us take a look, and we hope the data helped out. She's like, oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, we would have, that put us up a month ahead of time in terms of uh, our advancements. We're glad for the cooperation. And Caroline's, well, absolutely. I mean, whatever we can do to help out Mason's Haven, we're more happy. We're, we're the only people out here. Let's all make it work together. Are they and, lying? Uh, is she lying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you want to check on? What, how do you want to check that empathy or something? Or um, I guess so. Yeah. You roll empathy if you can see, let's see if she has ulterior motives. I assume she has ulterior motives, even if I can't read them. Uh. <laughs> um, what is that? Uh, 
20 double fives. That is, that is impressive. All right, I'm going to give you a lot. Great. Yeah, I mean, th this lady is like... Oh, I can also spend two stun points to make another immediate perception extra check. perception test with, with a, different, a different focus. What do you yeah. want to do? Intuition? Yes. Okay. All right, give me intuition yes, and follow up intuition. <laughs> 19. That's pretty good. All right. right. Zenny is on edge. <laughs> the sharp, <laughs> razor sharp focus. <laughs> yeah, it turns out that, that high oxygen has a, has a benefit. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I'll, I'll give you a bunch of bonus. I'll give you a bunch of information here. So she, so you kind of pick her up and, and you, you pick up that this lady is like, she, she's gone through quite a few etiquette classes. Mm -hmm. And this is not the real her. Um, you're guessing that this this woman is a stone cold bitch when she wants to be, or when she usually, when she when the stuff's kind of down. Mm -hmm. But um, and you can tell by her hairstyle, the way she kind of walks, that she's she's, she's got she's got to stick up her ass a little bit. But she's like she kind of gets results, and that's probably why she's here. Um, but at the same time, she also is understanding the circumstances and isn't above working with these people. Uh, but you can tell she definitely kind of looks down upon this area. And you're also getting that them showing up in their fancy ass cart with their fancy ass security guard wearing genuine like custom made security armor that's brand new that doesn't look like he's ever seen action uh, is a flex. Mm-hmm. But you, you, is, is that all, is that all, is, do you want any more information or anything else I could give to you? Um. Since your, since your dice balls dominate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if it would extend to anyone else in this entourage, but is there anything I can see from either the good doctor or anyone that's around her that would make me think that they are they are prepared and ready for violence the, so you look at them all none of them really have anything on them like they're not wearing jackets they don't have like weapons strapped on um your best guess they're a science team i mean you do see they have like data pads and shit right if there are weapons they're inside the cart but they're okay. you can't see them it isn't like they have a shotgun locked and loaded in front in the front seat it's like they probably have right. a trunk maybe the right one or something maybe some right stun grenades. i think i yeah okay okay and only okay. one of them seems like a, he seems like a combatant but you're also i mean to, to be fair they're on an alien planet driving across several you know several hundred kilometers or going across kilometers of area and they would probably bring someone with them um, that said, the star's edge is quite a, quite a ways out. This was like a two-day trip for them to come out here. Mm -hmm. um, so this isn't some arbitrary visit. How did they know we were coming down, or that just makes... I, I, I mean... I mean, so if you want to know how they would know you were coming down, you guys were in a large ship in space in orbit above them. Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. but if it took them two days to get there, it didn't take us two days to get down. Well, you guys have been no, guys... but we were we were in orbit for like oh, that's a right, while. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they, yeah, they would easily readily see you coming down as your Epstein drive burns through the sky. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that star moving really fast close to us—that's not a star. It turns out, um, <laughs> yeah. So no, they they would pick you up pretty quick. Uh, yeah, I thought we came down uh, like oh, you're good. You got with, yeah. with the time that they would have to start going. And it, just is, it is very time. I will say that it is the timing is impeccable. I will say that. But. Yeah. Um, yeah. The but timing she, is coincidental. I she, said, perhaps they knew we were coming before we even got here. That's she, what I was trying to say. Um, but yeah, Dr. Caroline goes, uh, oh, one of them, I, I will say this, one of them does, the only thing that one of them has that's unique is one of them does have like what looks to be like a kind of a cooler, a small cooler. Looks like like, you know, you'd have like a, like a drink in it type thing. Uh -huh. um, and they're carrying that. I mean, uh, pretty. they seem to be holding it pretty carefully. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. but, but Carolyn goes, yeah, uh, so anyways, uh, uh, Janet, we'd like to return your sample here formally. And, and I wanted to come and thank you in person for letting us take a look. And, uh, Janet's like, oh, thank you. And Michael goes, uh, or, uh, Dr. Navarro, the Alicia comes up and takes it. Oh, oh, excellent. Excellent. And it's like, it's a case. And, um, uh, Alicia kind of opens it up and it's just, oh, 
Excellent, fantastic. And you can see inside of it briefly, but it looks like a, a tube, like a test tube type thing, like a in kind of a isolated container. Mm -hmm. Definitely need to get that. Let's add a note to ourselves. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Doctor Arn goes. Uh, so, um, oh, so yeah, I, I understood you. You you have some recent arrivals. And Janet goes, oh, uh, yeah, this, the crew of the Sinclair uh, finally touched down. They made boots on the ground here to uh, Mason's Haven. This whole thing they made possible. And I'm like, oh, we've heard so much about them. Uh, their exploits uh, throughout the slow system have been magnificent, along with helping making all this, looking at your, all of this happen. She says in kind of a derogatory way. Um, she goes, uh, Caroline kind of breaks off. He goes, uh, goes to shake your head. goes, Captain Myrtle. Hey, how's it going? I've heard so you, much about you. Do you shake her hand? Yeah, I'll shake okay, her hand. She gives you kind of a pretty fair shake. Um, I've heard so much about you. Uh, I bet. Yeah, you, you've you been all over. You've uh, made some differences here and, and here and there. And um, the crew is uh, well proven. Well, that's good to know. It's, you know, good to hear some nice words. Well, absolutely. Um. Well, look, we uh, your arrival here is is fantastic because I don't know if you've heard about we our little satellite issue we've had. Yes, yes, we've heard about that. I understand that uh, you'd like some assistance Absolutely. tracking it down. Absolutely. And, uh, and you have a way to take care of it once we can find it. Absolutely. We'd be happy to retrieve it and everything like that, too, and decrypt and see what happened to uh, our satellite. We That side of the planet is a damn mystery. It's it's uh, none of us have really set foot, foot on it yet. Um, we sent our, we obviously sent a few satellites over there to take a look around, but you know, it's one thing to take a look from way up, and it's another thing to have actually you know look at the place, right? Yeah, sure, sure. And so this data that you're going to get, we can have some access to that too, right? Well, unfortunately, uh, the black box is directly encrypted, and it can only be accessed through um, a direct connection uh, with proprietary proprietary technology we have back at Stars Edge, Edge's uh, lab. And you wouldn't mind if we came along to check it out, you know, since oh, well, what we, the boss said it was cool. The, the boss? Oh, yeah, well, you know, everybody's got a boss. I suppose we all do. Um, well, uh, I'll, I'll double check that, run that by him again, but um, definitely would, uh, we definitely want to take a look, but we'll be happy to share our results. I mean, if there's a danger over there, we want to make sure that Mason's Haven is well aware of the dangers here on Aether One. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. we don't want anything happening to anybody or anything over here. No, absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely not. Um, I mean, it won't be sustainable as, you know, as, you know, it won't be sustainable to be able to have people settle here and live for generations and be profitable and safe and happy. So sure. And I have to say, some of the stuff we've we've already looked at has been, I mean, absolutely fascinating. I mean, this the, it just kind of points out the distance, the night ivy stuff. The uh, uh, this is absolutely brilliant. Uh, and this 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 material you you've pulled that your colony's pulled out of the the water um, through the hydroponic system is uh, this is groundbreaking stuff. This this right here, this little that little vial right there, that could change. Everything for everyone, quite easily. Yeah, we'd love to, uh, you know, we'd love to be able to know more about what you're doing over there. Uh, it's not much different than what you guys are doing. We're still figuring things out. We're still pretty new down here. Um, we're not quite as, it kind of looks over the hydroponics. We're not quite as focused on the self-sustainability. Um, our uh, We have contracts and we have benefactors that are you oh, know, sure. making supply runs back and forth here. Um, and, you know, I don't know. And she's like, from my understanding, it's, there's not too many colonies right now that are even self-sufficient. I think uh, maybe two to three are currently self-sufficient, but that number goes up daily. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. But um, if you guys get self-sufficient, I mean, fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, kudos to you. Yep. We're all hoping that we can all work together from, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. little small colony to, you know, coming up with some major science. I Absolutely. think it would be really great out here. Yeah, I mean, you got some brilliant people on your on, on this team out here. I mean, obviously, uh, Dr. Navarro, she points right to her. Uh, Navarro has an absolutely brilliant uh, scientific mind, great at uh, 
you know, figuring out uh, low end, uh, you know, nanostructures and stuff like that too. But uh, you're uh, one of your guys out here. Uh, what's his name? What, what's what's the? I only know what they call him the cultivator. She points to Janet, and Janet goes, "Oh, you mean uh, Doctor Dev uh, Dev Jameson?" And he, Jameson, and he's like, she's like, "Yes, Dev." That guy, that that's a real star player, uh, star player of your team there. Uh, he's one to watch out for in terms of uh, skill level, and I think he's going to be your, your your man that that makes the most breakthroughs here for the movie. Uh, we would love to, know. to we would love to have recruited him for uh, Star's Edge, but alas, um, he uh, his his, uh, his background didn't uh, he didn't he didn't quite make too well the background checks. Oh. Is that Zenny chiming in? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He, he um, we, Star's Edge is a little, as a startup, we have to be very careful with who we bring in. And we're worried about people with different uh, cloudy path, maybe blemishes on their record. And uh, Dev. Why? Well. I mean, uh, like, Denny, like, gestures to everywhere. <clears throat> uh, I don't think. Uh, I don't think anyone in this solar system is really going to mind if anybody has a shady past now, huh? <laughs> well, uh, it's it's more of um, once again, we're not sitting here for sustainability. We're we're hoping to move back once we kind of get our uh, our different projects uh, running and mm. kind of use this out. So it, this is just a, this is a you know, Aether One is just a stepping stone for Star's Edge. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, and it, it would definitely be in, in your best interest then uh, to make sure that uh, people aren't are working together and uh, aren't turning on each other, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, by no means. Yeah. Are we, no, no offense. I'm just saying. Or, or having any any sort of mind altering things happen to them while here on the on the on the planet, right? I'm like she, staring. She, she, kinda, she kinda takes at a her. second. She kind of looks back at the other side. Mind altering. And, she, and, and Janet goes, she goes, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dr. Arn. Um, uh, you know, uh, Zenny's kind of getting used to the atmosphere, the high oxygen, getting, you know, being a belter, it's, it's not used to a high oxygen environment. So it's, it's a little, it's got a little, you know, pleasant, but oh, and Dr. Arn, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. It, it, it can be quite the dramatic shift in terms of uh, our physiology's respective, what we're used to in coming to this planet, by all means. So fully understandable. And she's kind of patronizing you. Jan's trying to like be diplomatic. Um, it is not fun. <laughs> no, Zenny knows exactly how they would handle this on series, and <laughs> they're not on series right now. Yeah, it, it's a um, lot. Yeah, the, the one thing, you, you miss having the option of the airlock. Yep. That is, yeah. that is and not an option. Less gravity. Yeah, and less gravity, no airlock. Knowing where I am. <laughs> Well, uh, Dr. Arnie goes, well, look, um, listen, Janet, uh, we're going to just camp on the outside here uh, tonight uh, and make our way back. We're going to take a few samples on the way back, too, as we go and explore out, uh, hoping to get some footage. We're we're doing some really fascinating biometric uh, scans of the Brachosaurus. We're really curious about their um, physiology and how they move. It, it's this weird. And, 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 and Dr. Navarro goes, it's weird, right? They go in any directions at any one time. There's no front or back. And. Uh, Dr. Arnold's like, it, exactly. Maybe there's some sort of new, um, you know, have you ever see the spider mech uh, move along the ground? It's kind of like that, but it's equal in all directions. It's so strange. And to see that in an organic form is mind boggling. And uh, they kind of geek for a second. Yes, Wyatt. Has anybody tried to ride one of those yet? Is that what you're asking or are you thinking that? No, I ask it. Because uh, I'm like, <laughs> over. I'm just paying attention to their conversation. Do and... Dr. Navarro says, um, no, um, uh, maybe you've been staring at the murals on Medina Station too long, but no, we're not trying to ride everything here. I'm going to try. Okay. I mean, and these things, like I said, they're like, it's like, they're, they're like bigger than elephants. Like they're freaking big, but okay. I'll figure it out. Quiet, we have to get ourselves a gopher first. Oh, we do. And, and, we'll and, do both. And uh, Dr. Arn goes, Dr. Dr. Arn goes, <laughs> uh, a gopher? And uh, Janet goes, oh, we're, we're debating the, you've seen the little, the little kind of rodent-like, she says, yeah, we've seen them around. They're, they're kind of, 
I were debating naming them Night Gopher, the Ivy uh, Mole. We're kind of debating names. We might take a poll for the, the poll and see what shakes out. And Caroline goes, um, yeah, you, you guys keep up the good work. Look, we're going to go to our camp. <laughs> <laughs> People of the great science, guys. Night Gopher or Ivy Mole? Great science, guys. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and she goes, we're going to go and set up our camp. Uh, we'll be about like uh, half a kilometer out from, from you guys. We don't want to bother you tonight. We have a whole setup. You can see they have like camping gear and everything set up. Like, like you're, you're not even sure. Maybe even the cart can turn into like a tent. Or you're, you're not sure. It's like super advanced. Um, but yeah, they're all good there. And their security guy has just been staying there kind of watching. He's, he wasn't like spitting on the ground. He, was, he wasn't having his hand on his gun. He's just kind of leaning back. He drank some water, had a snack, stuff like that. Pretty mellow. We look non-threatening. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Two out of three. <laughs> Funny. Uh, okay. The tent. I like it. It's too much fun. All right. So um, they go ahead and they start. They get ready to leave. Uh, they kind of pack it up and everything like that, too. And Janet goes, I'm sorry for the intrusion, Captain. That was we wish I would have known they, they were going to show up. Oh, that's all right. It's uh interesting to meet her for uh, for the first time sure. and know how to expect for the second time yeah yeah well that's who we're retrieving the thing for that's who's doing the contract um you know uh they did help us out they did send us all that all the data on the spectral analysis of the materials and we're glad to have it back they did also send you uh gravity drugs that made someone lose well, themselves and murder someone. Yeah, that's a that's kind of a sore subject for us, and it's definitely a blemish. Um, you know, I think they had good intentions. The the mm. numbers aren't looked good, mm. but um, you know that that it sounded really good, and our our people here were eager to try to get down on the surface as soon as possible. It shaved off months of the time, uh, but only only half of them took the took the the treatment. Uh, and it, it was bad, you know. We we feel I feel awful for Doctor Bagot. Um. So yeah, I you know that that was a rough moment. But look, um, the the records of of what's going on in these frontiers, it's not in everyone's favor. I mean, look at Illus for Christ's sakes. We're doing pretty good so far. So well, uh, a little, as long as you're. As long as you're still aware, you know, that things could just not go well. Well, and that was the thing was even after the the incident, as we're calling it, they offered the spectral analysis and we took them up on it and they got the results back quick, quick enough to us. We had it back in a few days. You sure that they were at the, the true results? Everything seemed to check out. It looked out. It didn't, I didn't think any reason to, to lie to us. Um, you're... Uh, your Dr. Mm -hmm. Holtz seemed to like him. Uh, your, your guys back back on Ganymede seemed to think it was good. So if it's good, it's good. But we have the sample back now. And I mean, your guys on Ganymede, what, I mean, they could do some pretty good stuff here on Star's Edge, but your guys back on Ganymede, they could blow this whole thing open. So if you're going to send that sample back to them, that's, that's a hell of a... That's a good faith effort. I wouldn't mind having Ganymede uh, be in the favor of Ganymede. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I just want to make sure that they sent back exactly what they took from you. Yep, that's it. Um, and uh, Alicia kind of steps in. Why wouldn't they? And you know, she's a little more naive. We'll say naive. This is where I get the oh bless face. Okay. Uh, Zenny just kind of like um, lets out a measured breath as if to try to just <laughs> not get too annoyed at this very obvious answer <clears throat> because sometimes um very smart elitist assholes will do whatever they want to when they have an assurance that they're not going to stick around for Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, okay. I'm not saying that's what's happening, but it's smart 
until it's established here that you are here to stay to just keep it in mind that not everyone here is a team player okay uh, well we'll we'll be more cautious um but i you know and and uh jack i said well i don't even know but like we, we try to democratize everything so we, we vote and you know, we check before we all make these big decisions and i want to be i clear. think you are all doing great it seems i'm just saying pointing towards generally where okay. star's edge well, folks are I'll, going i'll take that in mind the next time i address the um uh, the members of the colony here. But hey, look, you know, uh, let me, I, I mentioned a special concoction from the lab. I'd like to oh, yeah. have you guys check out. Uh, why don't we head on over to, um, we, we have a little campfire we're going to be running over there. Uh, really easy to get fires going on this planet. We kind of like it. Um, and we got a little, the, the little burn logs type thing, like you know, kind of like Duraflame type things. And uh, we're gonna go run that. Uh, we don't burn them too often, but special occasion. We thought we'd uh, get one going for you. And uh, just uh, uh, bring bring a, bring your own cup. He says. You have like you have like cups in, the, in your bunk and everything. So okay. Right. So just like meet her over there in fifteen minutes, something like that. I'm very intrigued. Bring my fancy cup with me. <laughs> you did not bring your fancy <laughs> cup with you. I did not bring my fancy oh. cup. <laughs> Damn up. it. No, you, you stuffed your, your duffel bag is full of nothing but slippers. Um, so. Yeah, we ate all the chocolate, so. Yeah, all the chocolate. yeah it's going to be a while before I can actually make real chocolate again. But um, yeah, they give you 15 minutes here to go back. Uh, you guys have a few minutes in your, in your bunk before you're supposed to be out there. So that was interesting. I don't like that lady at all. No. Not like her. Shades of Pope. That's all yeah. I can say. Shades of Pope. That's very true. You know what? I don't like the idea of... I mean, I love the idea of going out there and getting the box. But I really don't want to be... I really want to know what's on that box, too. They're not going to tell us. But hey, if we find it... That's. We don't have to give it back right away. It's true. That's leverage we have. Very true. Uh, I we're am... taking all the risk, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I'm very excited. I'm really looking forward to going out there. Why don't try to ride a giant, strange creature? I make no promises. <laughs> okay. Retrieve thing. Study it. See what we could do. Get gopher. And then think about writing the big giant thing. Oh, I plan on being here for the, you know, for a long time. So we got lots time of time. We got, time to ride. we got lots of time to figure that out. I bet I could get Waxer to join me on that. Oh, I'm Maybe sure you Michaels? could. I'm sure you could. And it's a good really thing McMichaels is not coming down here. Because if we got McMichaels <laughs> down here, then who knows what would happen. Yeah, he'd, just be like, he'd, he'd be like, hold my leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he'd throw his leg. He'd, yeah. Whatever. Well, I keep forgetting I don't have an arm. Does it feel any different being on the planet side now? Um, It's not too much different. I mean, you're, you, okay. you, you've you gotten used to it. Uh. The, the arm adapts and everything too, so it's it's, a, it's okay. kind of smart. You have a decent arm, so um, yeah. I always forget about that. No, yeah, well, that's good. You know, it becomes a part of you. Um, <laughs> all right, so real quick, um, I do need someone to roll a d6. It's so different when it happens when we're here. I'll do it. Okay. It's like where's my three. dice? Roll the churn here. D6. Three. You got three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something happens. You don't know what. Um, oh, no. oh, all right, minor complication. <laughs> uh, all right, so you um, you guys come on back out to the they have a little dura flame. You can see Janet. Uh, Alicia has probably gone in for the night, but it's just Janet and uh, her assistant. And they uh, they kind of stand there, and Janet goes, uh, "All right, what do you guys got?" And you have your little cups. And, and like, it, I mean, you, you could have found like they have like drinking cups, but they also have like um, 
your your smaller cups for the bathroom, stuff like that. I mean, what do you guys want? What do you guys want to bring? Regular I cup. Small, I brought a small cup. All right. And she goes up and she has like a she has like a, a thermos, and she goes like, who wants to put their who wants to put their glass up first, sir? She no pours she pours it a little bit, and it comes over and it smells pretty strong, Wyatt. Uh, you you pretty quickly identify it as vodka. Potatoes. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, hey. she's like, this is a little project I've been working on. Um, you know, on the on the books, it's a fit on the books. It's uh, labeled as uh, uh, prototype lubricants, but uh, we're loose. We're, we're just loosening up some tongues, right? Perfect fire starter, too, if you ever change the name. Well, we'd rather not waste it on that right now. But uh, so but uh, look, uh, I wanted to toast to all of you coming down here and give and make sure you guys feel welcome. And uh, for helping making those happen, and a lot of people here, like I said, second chances uh, for a lot of folks here. Uh, they don't get second chance. No one gets a second chance like this. So I uh, just want to thank you for everything you're doing, and uh, I wanted to toast to the crew of the Sinclair. Launcher. All right. She goes up and she raises her glass. You guys all clink and drink it up. It, it's pretty smooth vodka. Uh, their hydroponic system seems to do pretty well, and the, they're they're doing some pretty good stuff there. So. Um, but you guys kind of kind of take a swill and so get you and says um, so yeah. Uh, any thoughts on it, on all this before uh, your first day out here in the colony? Well, you know, I'm I'm re- I'm really proud of all the work that you folks are doing out here. It seems like uh, you're doing some amazing stuff that you've adapted and and uh, you know this this is great. Well, I mean, we got a few hundred years of Martian military service here. Um, a lot of people have gone to uh, Martian academies for science and such, um, and uh, a lot of them just needed a fair shake, you know, uh, just get out of uh, the circumstances they were in. Um, you know, Mars likes to present themselves as being this uh, grandiose thing of everything's great, but honestly, we do have places that are uh, less favorable: uh, the shallows, uh, the deep, in this deep, and. Uh, People down there don't get a fair shake, but when you guys met with uh, Representative Gao, uh, Taiyi, a few years back, um, uh, that opened up a big opportunity for a lot of us. And, uh, most people here either just kind of um, maybe became ineligible for service because they did something stupid as a kid, did something stupid in the service, and now they're here, but we wanted to make sure not to waste that expertise. And uh, this, you've given them all a, a a great start, or a great start here, and a lot of them honestly would have just been wasting away down there. So yeah, I mean, we've been dealing with that on Earth for so long, you know. It's just like there's not enough opportunities, and you know, you. I, I don't know how it goes on Mars, but it's like you sink or you swim. Well, well on Mars, they um. You yeah, sink a, bad, I guess. That's that's the difference. Yeah, um, on Earth, it's kind of. We all know about it. It's there. You can't. It's not hidden. On Mars, we sweep it under the rug. Right. Um, and uh, it, it's it's the little known dirty inner secret of the Mar- of Mars society. So I'll give the I'll give the Earthers this. At least they uh, they acknowledge their uh, their people that are being served. So. Yeah, yeah. It's terrible. I mean, it's. It's just who we've been for so long, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is, I mean, all that I can't imagine having generations, you know, focused on, you know, ter- a terraforming project like that. And then, you know, have, if everything that you live for is this, and then you're told you're not good enough for it. That's got to, man, that's got to be just a mind fuck for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where you like you said on Earth, you know, we just accept it, and we know that most everybody is just gonna, you know, it's just gonna be on basic. Yeah, at least you guys have basic. True. They only provide that True. for these people. Um, well, listen, uh, I want to uh, thank you all for being out here and everything. Um, tomorrow we'll get down. To, we'll get down to work. Uh, I'll set you guys up with a meeting. Get you guys uh, whatever gear you need to do. Set the organization for this. Your guy Wax is still unloading the stuff over. Hopefully he'll be uh, here in the morning with all the, the gear off of the shuttle. Yeah. Yep. Um, and we can go get uh, working from there. 
So we can have brekkies and then go look mm. for brekkies. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> well, let's let's go with that. <laughs> All right. So she, she says, uh, "Well, good night, everyone," and she goes off with. Uh, uh, Thank Michael. you for the drink. Hey, you should, you got it. Go. I don't have a lot of that, so please uh, keep it to yourselves. I'm gonna enjoy the fire a little bit more. All right. Just kind of. Crew hangs out around a real a real campfire here. That would be. How about this? Definitely some I've, this is new. <laughs> yeah, this is what we did. We would uh we would do this and it's it's just amazing how it's such a a small pleasure to be found, you know, sitting up looking at the sky with just a fire, just to have a fire, you know? Pretty amazing. Yeah, I, it's, you know, it's something, you know, how many belters are going to be able to see like this. I don't know, man. And I know it's just a little bit of vodka, but you you know how I am. I, I always want to make <laughs> life better for all of us, you know, and we've been trying for so hard, you know, for so long to try to make a better place. And I know, I know that something's going to go wrong. It's always going to go wrong, but hopefully it's things that are manageable and we can manage because we've got more control over other people controlling our lives. And like I said, you know, if shit gets bad, we could leave. But hey, why not give it a chance, you know? I'm giving it my all cap. I'm so far. I, I like it. I'm really looking forward to this expedition. Really looking forward to it. But I'll start dozing off in my seat or wherever I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> you, do, you do have a warm feeling inside and out. That's just, this is what happens when you drink vodka around a fire. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, you guys take How do we night. put it out? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's kind of worked out. It's like, it's like all this oxygen in the air. It's Fair. like going to keep burning. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but you guys take it easy. Take it easy. Go to the bunk and uh, fall asleep for the next day. Um, I'm going to want every single one of you to make uh -oh. a hearing test yeah hearing? oh no yeah i knew it I put everything in Dang a it. how do we hear hearing what'd you get what'd you get Zenny? oh um 14 double okay. fours okay what'd you get wyatt 13. 15 15 no, no doubles hearing is what? Your perception. 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 Sixteen. Sixteen. All right. You guys all hear this. So you guys are all, all of a sudden you're you're woken up by you hear like a crashing sound. You hear like something oh, crash. Shit. Uh, not not in your building, but something like outside crashing. Well, I'm gonna grab my gun and start heading towards our door right, you, grab, you grab your oh, side yeah arm. zenny's like right next to the door like as soon as zenny hears it because yeah. they're paranoid as hell right now they're they're up i mean they they sleep with their gun in their bunk because of course they do um they're up and they're at the door and like they they get to the door and then they they they're like equilibrium catches up to them and then they're like whoa <laughs> yeah yeah you get a head rush for sure um Man. uh myrtle what do you want to do you hear your, your, um, your, your, I'm going to be ready also. I am uh, not going to turn on any lights or anything because, okay. okay. um, you know, we should be able to. Yeah, I don't want to draw any attention to ourselves. They, they do can... have uh, lights on outside. So there's places mm, lit. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will peek out the door. You peek out the door and you or can see outside a few people, like a few of the colonists here kind of running around. Um, some of them are fully dressed, some of them aren't dressed. But like you, most of them are running one direction, and a few of them are running the opposite direction. And you hear another crash. Whatever way they're running away from, I'm going to run towards. So you come around, you come out, yeah. and you can see. Um, yeah, I'm I'm right there next to to what. You guys come out in uh, your uh, whatever you're wearing to sleep in, uh, and you have your weapons drawn, and um, you uh, you can see like like some like. Um, like sparks and kind of flashes of light in the distance. Um, 
probably like further into the colony, like past the buildings, and you can uh, you hear like you see one guy. He's got a he's got like an automatic. He's got an assault rifle, and uh, he's actually wearing like a little bit of. Uh, he doesn't have a fully on, but he has like a like a chest pad on. He's got like body armor on, um, and he's running that direction that with with the with the firearm. Um, and he clearly knows how to move. The guy's like you're you you know a military man when you see him. Um, and uh, he's going off Just that. Be direction. Clear, that's somebody who's running like like we are towards. Yes, the he's noise. running towards. It. Yeah, okay. he's, he's ahead of you. Okay. And, uh, okay. He's okay. checking on people. Tell him get cover, get back there, get the cover. Uh, okay. You know, head down towards the water, stuff like that. He's like giving directions. He's passing them. Um, you're guessing some sort of security officer for the colony, um, but he's definitely giving them good directions to go away from the danger. And um, you hear the, you hear like the second, you hear a third crash, and then you start hearing some gun. You hear a few gunshots. Um, but uh, what do you guys, you guys keep on rushing towards it? Oh, I'm gonna keep rushing towards it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, does anyone here want to try to make like a perception check to try to figure out what's going on, or ask someone, or what's going yeah, on? Yeah, I will. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna yeah, I'll, try to I'll, use I'll my own. Go slower. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'll try to use my own perception to to. Yeah. I trust my perception more than the people around here's perception, obviously. <laughs> so I'm gonna go that route. Okay. Uh, which which perception you're rolling? Like hearing, seeing. That should not be a good one here. Tasty would not be a good one here. Smelling would not be a good one here. I know intuition or empathy would be more of like um, uh, seeing or hearing, pretty much. Yeah. I think. Oh, jeez. Um, I will do seeing. Okay. I think there's right, a little see. too much. The sound seeing, yeah, the seeing can see what's going on here. So you look up the distance where you can see the sparks flying, you hear the gunshots. 13. Oh, that's going to be a failure. You would need a 15 to do this. You want to spend a fortune? You can. Yes. If I get above a fifteen, is it a greater success? No, a fifteen is just the okay. it's the drama die determines success, so Okay. Um so are you spending fortune? I have to send yeah, I have to spend six, but yes. Okay, we'll get you the uh we'll get you the we'll get to that here in a second. We'll have your C resolve. Well, what about you, uh Myrtle? What do you want to do? Um I'm also gonna uh kinda observe what's going on to see what the people are doing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll let you just get that one. You can see that they're running away from the target or from whatever's out there. And a lot of them, uh, you can tell a lot of them don't even know what's going on. They don't know what the danger is. Um, so, like, there are kind of, it seems like more of that they're, they're panicked not because um, they saw what was going on. They, they don't know what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna um, f listen to what the the guy was saying when he was directing everybody, mm -hmm. and I'm going to continue to direct people that look like okay. they're the like freaking out, right. and then shove them the opposite right. direction. And he sees you doing that. He actually kind of gives you a nod. The the security we'll officer. Oh, uh, Wyatt, what do you want to do? I'm just going to follow as closely to the other guy as possible. Yeah. I want to keep my eyes he, peeled. That one. So Zenny's actually gotten ahead of you guys because Zenny's kind of like tail uh, made a beeline. Uh, you guys are helping move these people here. Um, he's kind of looking at it. He goes, he says, uh, goes, uh, uh, you know, you're Wyatt, right? Yes, sir. He's all right. He's all, I'm, uh, I'm Rhett Green. I'm the uh, the head of security for, this, for the thing. What the hell is going on, man? I was hoping you would have an answer to that, not me. Oh, I was asleep. He's like, well, let's shit. Let's go figure it out here. And he goes, and uh, he see, he goes, he kind of points over to one of the one of the buildings. And, he, and like, he's kind of directing to go building the building to take a secure route and cover. I'll so do that. You, you recognize all the hand signals for like your Martian training and everything. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, Merle, do you want to follow suit? And he kind of sees, he sees your, he goes, uh, is your, is your friend there going to, uh, scout for us? What's he doing? What are you doing, Captain? About... Zenny, yeah. Because Zenny, oh. yeah, Zenny booked it. Zenny was like, yeah. yeah, Zenny booked it. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm just going to wave them on and then I'll kind of follow behind them right. and. So, so then you kind of you you kind of went ahead of everybody, kind of watching, and in a flash of the light, you saw like, you saw this giant leg rearing up, and you're pretty sure it's one of the brachiosaurs. Shit. And it looks okay. like it, it's it, it's like stamping on like one of the the buildings in the area. Okay. Jeez. Okay. And this thing is um, like, like it's like 
20 feet to the shoulder. It's freaking big. Yikes. That was a... Okay. Well, um... I will head roughly that direction, mm -hmm. um, kind of helping to, like, if I see people who are, you know, running around, I'll try to point them in, like, a convenient direction. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think I can stop this giant thing, but my, my eyes are looking for any Star's Edge people. Okay. Um, or anyone who looks a little bit too calm in this situation. I will say this, this part of the the colony is the opposite side from where the Star's Edge people came from and where they went. That means nothing. Okay, fair enough, I'm saying, I'm just saying. Um, all right, so they, um, uh, okay, all right. Uh, so you guys start taking some sec uh, take a few seconds here to like, or a, few, a few rounds to get up there. And you can see that this thing is like stomped all over what looks to be like one of these like uh, prefab buildings. Uh, kind of stomped through it. It's not like rummaging through it. It's just kind of stomping around it, uh, freaking out. It doesn't, it makes, it doesn't really make too much noise. It doesn't make like a rearing sound, um, anything like that. But it's just kind of like, <laughs> you can kind of hear like the movement of the, of its mass, like pushing through the thing. Can you tell? Does it seem like it's panicked, or if it's just moving like it would normally move? You can go ahead and roll your xenobiology stat. Okay, well, that's, you don't that's have that. So no, I don't you don't that. you don't know if it's panicking. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I mean, you you like like your and your experience with animals is pretty limited being a Martian, but like it's I don't know what panic is. It seems to be. It just seems to be like maybe panicking might be a way of putting thinking of it. You could you could interpret it that way. I mean, that's a valid interpretation. Could be angry. Could I think I'm going to hold off trying to ride this could, one, then. Could be trying to mate with, the, mate with the bunker. You don't know. Like, I don't know. Is it, does it look like it's particularly um, trying to stomp on it or just random? It looks random? like it, it's making, it's taking its time. It's not trying to run through the whole facility. It's only stomping on this one building. It, yeah. The building's not all the way destroyed. It's destroyed by, like, the back half of the building. I really hope there's nobody and, inside. Uh, but... Yeah, uh, uh, Red, uh, Security uh, Chief uh, Green goes. He goes. That's not a. That's not any of the uh, uh, domiciles. That's just one of our uh, lab storage facilities. Can we find out what was stored in there? Possibly. I mean, we got. You want to read through the whole. Uh, the whole. Well, not now. There? I mean, like afterwards. I'd like to know if. Yeah, well, I'll population. make sure. You, yeah, I got some questions about that too. We'll make sure you get access to that there. Uh, Thompson. All right. Well, look, uh, this thing's got to go. We got to figure a way to get it away from the camp or take it out. What, what, what do you guys think? I mean, I mean, and you can see a few people that just like taking shots at it here, but it doesn't seem to really care much. Well, if I can get on top of it, I could ride it out. Okay. I really so don't have sure. a. <laughs> Well, I honestly don't have a real solution because I have this the first time I've ever seen one of these, and it's kind of. Love crafting in a way, and it's really kind of just throwing you out, throwing me out of it a little bit. I mean, it has no to head. ride this thing. <laughs> um, I, I is, wanna... is there like, do we have something that maybe we could trip it up, you know, like, to you knock could, it over? Yeah, you guys have like cables and shit. When you could try to like, yeah, you could try to cable it up. I mean, its legs might, you might be able to like, uh, kind of like hog tie it or something like that, or do a loop around it real quick. That's what I was thinking. Um, uh, Red and if it falls, it could take out more and cause more damage. Well, Rhett takes a second. He goes, well, we could run a cable over there. And we could put a... He's like, that, that, that thing would drag us around. Maybe we could tie one to a... We could tie uh, each end of a cable to a cart try to trip the damn thing. Yeah. Drag it out of here. So I don't have... We don't have a net that big. I'll tell you that much. Huh. Yeah, like, I guess that's... I mean, that's... Maybe it's got a better idea. That's the best one I've heard. Because I've got nothing. I've legit got nothing. The thing is, keep on stomping on this place. But it's it. Does it feel like it or look like it's intentionally hitting that on purpose? Or yeah, just, I mean, it's, it's not, just it's not, it's not moving on. Like it's just it's on that 
the spot and like even that bunker, like only half of it's destroyed. It's only stomping on the back half of it. Right. So it's maybe it's something like like you were saying, maybe it's something that is a pheromone or something that's got it twisted all up and and crazy. So I don't know. Maybe we could just trip it over or try to lead it away. I don't even know what to do to lead it away. What if we just sit here and watch it for just a little bit? If it doesn't continue on to go to another building or something or, you know, directly posing a problem or a danger, well, Red, just watch it. Red goes, look, if we don't do anything, like people are here are going to start freaking out. Oh, that's or true, too. Than they already are, so we should do something, make them at least think we're trying to change something. Let's knock it down. What is anything? I'm curious about what Zenny thinks here because this is. Um, I didn't know if Zenny was with them or not. Oh, you, you could be. Yeah, you could. You could be. They, I thought they caught up to you. and They were kind of taking a position to watch the thing for a second. Um. Unless you want to run off. No, after. my my interest wasn't in the actual creature. Oh, okay. Like at all. Like, okay. I'm I'm pretty. You're watching everybody. Else. Zenny's convinced herself that Star's Edge okay. has something to do with this. So that's like. Zenny's more looking at the people, people okay. who are um, around, and again, like trying to find any of these Star Jazz people, um, and anyone who just looks looks you, like they're a little too sure in this situation. Outside of like the people I know, you you do see that there is another pair of people up there uh, wearing security armor, uh, but you're pretty sure like there's two of them, and they have rifles. But you're pretty sure that there's uh, Mason's Haven uh, security guards. And just making sure people don't come closer to the thing. But you could check them out too. Uh, but you don't see any of the Star's Edge people unless you want to make like a, uh, if you want to make a deep perception check. You can. Um. Yeah, I would. Make like a. Yeah, make like a circle. Like a. This would be seen. Yeah, looking for them. Um. Sixteen double okay. trace. Yeah, you don't see the Star's Edge people. You only saw the four. And you're even not you're not even seeing that many people around this thing. It looks like uh, and and this thing's kind of like uh, it just seems kind of content. It's not content, but it seems like it just keeps on bashing on this one on these, these one sections of this thing. I mean, the whole the whole that whole part of that this bunk or this like really is shattered or it's just crushed into nothing. But it seems to keep on wanting to pound on it. Um. Uh, um. Okay, who, anybody who's near me, whether it's like somebody here mm-hmm. or somebody who's running past, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll stop someone okay. and just ask, hey, what, what was in that building? That's just the lab storage. That's what where we have in our there? reagents, uh, like extra lenses, uh, I mean, chemicals, uh, just whatever we need to run our lab experiments, uh, some extra circuit boards. It's a storage. Okay. Look, I, 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 I need to stop that thing. I have to go take out the whole damn camp. Mm. Uh, Zenny doesn't like say yes or no to that. Mm-hmm. Zenny has theories, but um, <laughs> they'll like just motion for okay. whoever this is to right. keep. They going. run off. Yeah, they run off. And um, I'll find these people. So, so. Uh, Green Green kind of goes and he goes. All right, I'm gonna go get. So why don't we head off? Get, get a pair of cars. We'll hook up a cable to try to drag the thing out. That's my best bet. I agree. Okay, man. He's like, all yep. right. Um, he's like, I'll drive. I'll drive on the left. When you need to drive on the right. Okay. Which who's gonna drive this thing? Who's gonna drive the car? I want to know who wants to drive. Who's got Who's got good uh, drive skill? I think you need Waxer here. Waxer's the driver. Yeah. <laughs> Waxer. Waxer's yeah. the best driver. Yeah. You do have pilot totally Myrtle, so I mean, I, pilot, I mean, you know, pilot will help I, out a little bit here, but pilot's like a different kid for me, uh, but driving would be it. So it is deck space, so you are probably the best out of here. Yeah, I mean, uh, I could I could try it. Uh, dexterity driving or piloting okay. or minor actions, right. you know. All right. So he goes. So he goes. All right. So here's here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna drive the carts. We'll sync them up. We'll drive out. We'll try to wrap it around and drag it out. We'll kind of come in, kind of come in like a. Thing and keep on pulling and see if we can get it. I don't know if the carts are going to be strong enough to pull this thing, but we'll at least be able to try to like motivate it to get it away from the thing. 
Um, yeah. If you guys want to help with that, uh, Wyatt, Zenny, if you guys want to shoot at it, throw something at it, get get it distracted from what the hell it's doing so we can get it away, that would be handy. I think we can call something. All right. Um, he go ahead. He like he unslings his rifle, and uh, he he hands his rifle to you, Wyatt. Let you have that for it. Take it. And he goes, uh, but he's, I'm gonna want to borrow that. He points your pistol. Oh, here. He's like, yeah, he's like, I can't drive and shoot the rifle, but I can drive and shoot the pistol. So. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. All right. So he uh, so you guys go off and he grabs. He has the cart. You guys rig the thing. The thing's still making a lot of noise. You see sparks flying. This thing's still like it's stomping this thing on the ground. Um. So Myrtle, he has you set up in a cart. You got uh, he's in a cart. What about Wyatt and Zenny? What do you want to do? Where do you guys want to go? Like, do you want to go to the far side of it where they're trying to drag it? Do you want to kind of like distract it a little bit? I, like, I definitely want to try to distract it. I just don't know what's going to be the best way to go about that. Do we have any hmm. like stun grenades or something? I was thinking something like that or some kind of way to like a fire almost, not incinerary or anything oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and Rhett, he'll hand you a, a, he's got a flash grenade or something like that. But the thing doesn't have eyes, that's one thing that's known about it. it might The bang might set it off, but it's not. That's what I'm hoping happen. if I get the bang close enough to it, it'll. Uh, it'll definitely feel the vibration of it. Yeah, that might make it, make it want to move out. Okay. Well, I'll try that. I want to hear Zenny's mm -hmm. theories. Mm, um, Zenny's Zenny doesn't know what to do with this giant thing. <laughs> it's so it's so alien, like even more so than it being like an alien creature on like a different planet. Like it's mm. it's like the first. I mean, besides like the goats. Oh, it's on, a close encounter of the third kind, my friend. Yeah, it's like it's it it's on top of it being like a alien. It's also like one of the first like animal type creatures <laughs> that they've like encountered. Um uh but they also don't really want to hurt it cuz they again, they have it in their mind that Star Jets did something mm. to antagonize this thing, maybe, you know, hopped it up on some of the drugs that were given to like the, the the gravity drugs that made one of their people go absolutely bananas for no reason um so like she's got that so locked in <laughs> in her head um that she doesn't want to do anything to hurt it so i think yeah they would they would go along with what wyatt was saying of like trying to do some like loud or large disrupt in opposite of where it's going to be pulled so that it might like go that direction naturally. Okay. Right. Uh, so what, which, which direction do you want to like shoot? Like, so I'm hearing you want to shoot or throw it, like throw the flashbang. Where do you want to throw it? Do you want to throw it like between it and the camp? Do you want to throw it on the other side of it away from the camp, the side? Where do you want to throw it underneath the thing? I want to, yeah, I would like to throw it underneath it okay. and see if that'll All right. kind of startle it. So go ahead and give me a throwing test. This is an accuracy test if you don't have throwing. How's your accuracy? Where is that? Oh, there it is. Nah, I don't want to break it back. Well, that's not bad. Double five, so 10, 11, oh, okay. 12, 12 oh. total. Yeah, you throw you you throw the flashbang out uh, and it, it goes underneath the thing. And are, are you going to be on the, are you going to be on the, like, like, which, like, so let's say this is it. Here's the camp. Here's the thing. Do you want to be out this way? Do you want to be out this way? Where do you want to be? Which direction do you want to be at? I want to be outside of the camp. Okay. I want to be whatever way I think will push it away from the camp. So you pull, yeah, you pull away from the camp and you throw the thing underneath. The bang goes off. Um, and uh, go ahead and roll, like, roll 3d6 for this. And let's see if you can, um, yeah, roll 3d6 for this. Let's see if you can, uh. So, get this thing distracted just add them up 14 14 okay yeah. so yeah your 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 the bang goes off and it seems to actually kind of react a little bit like it kind of like it kind of like buckles <laughs> up it stops stomping for a second tries to regain it's like uh it's balanced a little bit uh red red ray radios into you Merlin goes go uh and he's you know, you know you know punch it and uh you guys start driving um Wyatt and Zenny do you want to keep on trying to distract this thing 
if Zinni doesn't do something in the next few moments, uh, Wyatt will throw another stun grenade if he can. You have the one. Just the one? Just the one, yeah, I'm sorry. Then I'm gonna be like... Oh, I have one. Oh, you have a stun grenade? Okay, you throw a stun grenade? <laughs> yeah, I have okay, one. Go for it. Um, no, I'll toss it to Wyatt, though, okay. so Wyatt. that Wyatt can throw it. Right, you toss the... uh, My throwing is bad. And also, I'm still keeping an eye <laughs> out for, like... Gotcha. Right. Anything else? Uh, you guys are out in the middle of like a bunch of. There's something else. You guys are kind of out where there's some night ivy and everything like that too, and it doesn't. Uh, I guess it's pretty clear. You don't really see anything moving around here. Um, the only noise is coming from this thing making all the noise with the base. Um, why? Uh, this give you the next throw test here, and then Myrtle make a drive test. So that's dexterity if you don't have it. Let me red here. Oh, red. Damn, red can drive. <laughs> all right, here we go. I got fifteen. Oh. 15, all right, you throw the second one underneath it. it you almost manage to time it up to with Rhett and uh, Myrtle getting the cable to drag it back. What'd you get, Myrtle? Uh, 16. Oh, that's pretty good. And I got a, a six on the... Oh, very nice. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I do have doubles. I have three. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, you guys, the, the thing starts, like, uh, Wyatt throws a second flashbang on it, and like this time it starts really kind of freaking out. It, it, it doesn't like that. And then the, the two cards come up, and you manage to do catch it. The carts, though, are like, this thing weighs a lot more than the two carts. Um, but the carts do kind of manage to pull a little bit. Uh, and they do kind of manage to put it off balance enough that, like, it goes down a little bit. It starts to tip over a bit. Um, Zanny, make a scene test. to spend four points to make it a 20. Oh, that's fantastic. That's what's way more you. So you see the thing, you're watching around for the Star's Edge people because you know they're out there. But when you do, you, you see that this thing tips over, like part of it tips over and one of its feet kind of like actually like kind of goes um, parallel with the ground. And you can see that the bottoms, the bottom of its feet are like these kind of pits. Like it has pits in its feet, um, like little like little gaps inside its feet. And it doesn't look nearly as thick as the rest of the thing. Like you can see like what looks to be maybe some sort of like uh, organs or something like that or something with a lot, we'll say softer tissue than the rest of it. Right, I'm just kind of confused because Zenny's not even considering doing damage to this thing. Like, I'm just saying though, you 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 do notice this element of it uh, because you're not you're not shooting anybody, you're not driving a car, you're the only one that notices this. Just saying. Okay. But I'm not saying you have to do anything with it. I'm just saying you notice that it has a weird anatomy underneath its feet. It is. It is in the brain, and <laughs> and that's it right now. Yeah. All right, um, Myrtle, you you and uh, you you feel the, the rope go taunt. You can feel the thing squealing. Uh, make another drive test. You can you can drag this thing a little bit. Uh, eight, seven, fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Um, and I got a I got doubles again, and I got a four on the drama die. So both you and Rhett are starting to like right. The things both go taunt and trying to drag it. Uh, the Brachiosaur, like, it, it kind of goes along with this for a little bit. You can actually hear it stumble a little bit as it gets back on its feet. And then, like, it seems to kind of just, like, pull, sort of, like, moving back the direction. It, like, you guys pulled it a little bit away from the bunker, or the, 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 the storage shed it was stopping on. And, like, all of a sudden, it, like, starts moving back towards the storage shed, like, trying to move back that way. As it regains its footing. It's just weird. Um, like it seems to want to go towards that that place like over and over again. Well, it's yeah. This gosh darn. That's weird. How? Mm, I want to get closer to the building. Okay, these are you move, you move out of the field, uh, go around where uh, Myrtle's cart is. Come to the building. You can see the one the front of it's still intact. Like there's still a door to it, 
but the back half of it's open. You can just go around the side if you wanted to get into it. But the, the animal is yes. trying to like get back towards it, but it's not quite there yet. Yeah, but you're... Yeah, I want to get inside that building okay. and see what is inside that building. All right, you get all, you you, uh, you just jump over the edge of it where it's been stomped and the wall's been broken through, um, and you kind of look around it. I mean, it's a bunch of crates that have been smashed or tilted over, stuff's on the floor, whatever it is. Um, the one side of it, almost like almost everything over there has been flattened by this thing. Mm -hmm. But this side, like stuff's just, you know, knocked a jar from being stomped on the area being stomped so it's it's in pretty good sh mm -hmm. that part's pretty good shape but that part is pretty flat but you can certain uh if you want to search through the rubble you can and the thing is not quite there yet it hasn't quite gotten back to the uh the shed as myrtle yeah and, uh, I, I there's there there's a re the, it's zenny knows this thing is not going to go through the rest of the camp there's a reason that it's staying here mm -hmm. and zenny wants to find it uh, if you want to look around, give me a uh, give me a searching test. I don't know if you're any good at that. I am. I have a plus six. Well, that's pretty good. That's a bad, bad roll, though. Burning fortune, all night long. Midnight <laughs> fortune. Um, got a twelve. You would need a 15 to succeed. Okay. Um, I will do it. All right. All right. So you start, uh, what'd you go the drama die? Uh, I th think it was, I just picked it up. I think it was a three. Okay. So you start, you start looking around that rubble area and you can see like, it, there's like the roof of the thing on top of it. Um, you start kind of moving some stuff apart, uh, trying to get through it here and there. Uh, why you saw Zeddy run into the building this thing stomped on, uh, Myrtle? You don't know it's, you don't know that, that Zeddy ran into there as you try to keep the cart going. Um, what do you want to do, Wyatt, while Zeddy's like, um, going through the rubble? I'm gonna follow her and get okay, so try you, to convince her not so, to be there. So Myrtle, you see Wyatt start running back towards the bunker, uh, and, and uh, what do you want to do, Myrtle? Like, and Rhett's like, we're getting this thing. Come on, come on, Myrtle, we can get this thing. All right, we'll try. Maybe we can. Um, uh, try to drive it uh in a different direction well he's like then, well he's like his because right now you guys are kind of going straight off of it why don't you guys try he's like why don't we we should try to move in to try to tie it up right 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 yeah that's okay. what i was thinking all right so make another drive test myrtle yeah Let's see oh no oh. the bad 10 10 so how much do i need to that see? you uh um, it, it actually the, the the creature actually rolled really high uh, and beat beat both of you. Uh, so as you guys do it, the cable snaps and your guard your guys' carts go off. Um, Red, make another make another drive test, Myrtle. Red keeps control of his. Let's see if you can keep control of yours. Oh yours. no. <clears throat> uh, six, eleven, thirteen. Oh, you're good. Seventeen. You're good. Yeah. yeah so you managed to keep control. You kind of skid it out. The cable. My snaps. piloting skills came yes. in handy. Yes, yeah, so it, it was an overlap there. Um, but you guys kind of peel out and he kind of, you guys now kind of face each other cart. He's just like, he looks back at it and he, and he kind of looks back at it and he goes, the fuck are your officers doing? And, he, and you can see that like Zenny and Wyatt are inside the building. This thing's moving back to stomp on. Uh, Zenny, uh, you, you kind of start searching through the rubble and you're pulling stuff apart and like you're, you're, you're on the right track. You know you're on the right track. Give me another uh, search test. Get through that rubble. Seventeen double fives. Fuck, that'll do it. All right. So why you kind of come over the edge and you see Zanny like going through the rubble, pulling stuff out. You can see the the creatures coming back, right? It'll probably be back in a few more seconds. Um, then you pull, you come up and like, um, all of it just looks like a bunch of just like I mean broken glass, reagents, uh, storage cases, lot you know, stuff like that. But you do see one thing that looks very familiar. It looks like the case that they deliver the sample in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unsurprising, Zenny is unsurprised. <clears throat> Un unbowed and unsurprised. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so you see that you can see that it's actually still in pretty good shape. It's a little dinged up, but like that thing's meant to take a bunch of damage. I will grab it. Oh, you grab it. Okay. Yeah. So so why you see Zenny standing there with the canister with the sample in it? 
What the? What is that? What are we doing with this? We gotta go. Run while you talk. Um. Uh. Okay. Sunny's gonna. Uh. I think Sunny's gonna take it. All right, real quick. Um, uh, what is what is Zeddy's defense and what is your defense, Wyatt? Uh oh. 14? 14? Yeah, mine's 14 also. Okay. So you guys are standing there, and all of a sudden, this foot comes down right next to you and Holy misses shit. you stomping down, and it's like deafening. You can hear it, but it, it misses both of you. But this this thing seems to be stomping on the area around where Zenny is. Whatever that is, get rid of it. Or you're going to be uh, uh, just like the rest of that junk in there. Uh, how far away is one of the car cars? Um, it's the probably the like about like a probably like a twenty meters out. Take you like take you two turns over out, or about uh, if you do a full sprint, you could maybe get out there. Okay. If I, I see her coming out that way, I could take off towards. I start you. running right. towards one of the cars because okay. I want to try to get this thing as far away from yeah. the camp as possible to see if it's actually okay. following this thing. So you see Myrtle in one of the carts, and uh, Rhett's sitting there, and he's looking like he's trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And you're you're you have the ball, and you're running it. Uh, and as you do, the thing tries to stomp on you. Uh, you notice it's actually decently fast, but it actually tries to stomp on you. Uh, any, I mean, it's uh, got size on its side, so like it's gonna it's gonna <laughs> move fast. <laughs> it can change directions immediately. Yeah, that one I believe will hit. That'll be a fifteen to hit. So yeah. it's its foot comes down. Uh, stop it around you and it gets you for a whopping uh, 20 damage. Jeez. You, you, do get, you do get to subtract your uh, toughness and if you have, I think you have one for armor, but whatever your toughness yeah, is, you so you'll lose my fortune. 16. But you guys are ninth level, so. Uh, okay. Well, what geez. are you down to? 15. Oh, okay. So yeah, this thing out of forty four. <laughs> this thing stomps down, and Zenny, it's like deafening when it comes down uh, next to you. Um, but you guys can see this thing's definitely chasing Zenny. Um, Myrtle, you you drive up, and uh, you can drive up real quick. It's not, it's not an issue. I'm not gonna roll for it. Uh, but I assume Zenny want to jump in the passenger seat. Uh, wanna... Is there like a back to it? Is it yeah, like an back, open? Yeah. yeah, it's like an open car. Yeah. Like a like an open Jeep Golf situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just literally jump in the bag, yeah. like not even sitting down. Okay. Um, right. And uh, just yell at uh, the captain to to drive. Okay. All right. I'm where gonna we, drive. Where, like very good. Where where do you want to where do you want to drive to? Back like out into the the, the darkness or what? Um. Is there a way to kind of skirt the darkness, like headed towards another area that's like on the edge of the yeah, light? You can, go, you, you, can know? Go along, you can go along the camp, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you could you could even head south to where the campsite for Star's Edge is. Hey, <laughs> let, that sounds fun. Okay. All right. <laughs> so you, you you start heading around the edge of the camp of, of the colony. Uh, this thing, you're a little bit faster than it. it. It can't quite catch you, but it seems to be chasing you guys uh, pretty readily. Um, okay. Is there is there a way if I sit in the back of this mm -hmm. like this space if I can open this container to see if there's anything else? Yeah, in you can it? open it. Yeah, it's not wrong. Okay. That's not locked up, so you open it up. It kind of unscrews and opens up, and um, you see inside that there's a uh, like it, it cracks open and inside is like a test tube. It, has, it looks like sand, like kind of like a like a different multicolored sand, like a pink, purple, blue sand in there. Suspended like in a liquid. I mean, it looks like the, you've seen the picture of the sample. This this is what it looks like. Okay. Is you, there not, anything else in in this container? Um, it's like more. It's like a series of buffers, so it's it's kind of meant right. not to, to break. Um, right. And you can temperature control it and stuff like that too. But uh, okay. maybe like a, I mean, uh, this would be like a technology test, I guess, to pull it apart, see what it has. You want to make a technology test? Not. Well, I don't want to spend the time to like tear it apart. Okay. I guess. I guess if I if I did a technology test, it would be like just for information gathering of like, is there something weird? Um, but I think what they're gonna do is what uh, is the tried and true method of um, fuck around and find out. And they're gonna put the vial in their pocket, mm -hmm. 
or they're going to hold it for now, and they're going to do an overhand chuck okay. of the container into the dark, st- sure. the darkness. All right, you throw it out into the night, Ivy. You, you, you yeet See where the this can- thing goes. Yeah, you yeet the canister. Uh, give me a throw test itself before you can throw it. Jeez. Oh, it doesn't this matter. Is- so you throw the canister, and the creature continues to pursue you guys. Okay, great, 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 great. That's fine. I, that makes sense. Okay. Throw the case? <laughs> I, I threw the case. That's what case I did. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I have, the, I have the stuff that was in it still. Yeah. Um, uh, Myrtle, you get past the camp, you get past the colony, and you go for a little bit. Uh, how far do you want to go out past the colony or the colony? Um, is, is there any light at all? There is a, a small light out in the distance, which you're guessing is where the Star's Edge people are camping for the night. All right, I'm going to keep going. Right, you keep on going. All right. Wyatt, you and Red are sitting there, and, like, Red, they get you in the cart, and you guys are kind of pursuing. Uh, I assume you would go with him. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll go with him. And he's just watching the thing from behind. Uh, you guys can see that he threw the canister out. Um, Myrtle, you go towards... Do you want to go towards the camp, around the camp? What do you want to do? Yeah, I want to go towards the camp. Right, go towards the camp. Um, as you come to the camp, uh, you can see that their security officer has heard all this. Um, clear because this thing's kind of the, the big thing's kind of running behind you guys is pretty loud, and he has like his he has like an assault rifle out, and he's like uh, like he's telling you can tell him to tell he tells other people to get in the cart and go. Right. What do you want to do? Do you want to keep on heading towards their camp, like or what's left of their camp, or do you want to go around it, or? Yeah, I'm gonna just kind of head towards it uh-huh. a little bit enough to just like breeze by it. Okay. And just um, and I'm, right. I'm just gonna yell. I'm just I'm okay. I'm really frustrated and and freaked out. So I'm just gonna okay. yell, you know. Yeah, yeah, fuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So you guys kind of start moving. You start going towards it, and you you veer off. Uh, the security guard kind of holds the place the camp while the other people are kind of while the other three got into the car and started going kind of uh, perpendicular to you guys. And uh, as you guys kind of pass around the camp, he has his rifle out, trained on the creature, and you hear like a <laughs> come out. And you like Zenny, you like watch the break of sword just explode. I don't see any of this, damn it. But you know, you see it, you guys see the disc, you just see this, I'm this, still, this, okay. this like creature. It's, like, it's, it's big it's, enough. It's big enough, yeah, yeah you're not gonna miss it. Um, you see, like, you see, like, something go, like, you, you see, like, a little, like, light come out, out of this guy's gun, and all of a sudden, this thing just <laughs> explodes out into, like, a bunch of, like, Alien gore, like I don't know how to, how to describe it. It's not blood. It's, it's unclear what it is. It kind of reminds gross. you of the night ivy a little bit, like almost like it's eternally the night ivy, but like it's not. A little more colorful inside. I, when I hear something that goes on behind me, I'm gonna kind of whip around the cart yeah. to look, you know, and you see, see what's up. you see like these four legs tilting as its body just kind of tilts over, and collapses, and uh, their guard is sitting there. He's got his gun. He's looking at you guys like this, and he's kind of, he's walking up with it in a position towards the thing. Like, he's not sure if it's dead or not. I'm gonna pocket this vial. Okay, okay, pocket away. Because nobody knows I have it except for me. Oh, secrets. True. <laughs> All right. Um, I just saw the case go, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he, um, uh, he, he sees you guys, he goes, what the, what the hell is going on here? The hell this thing come from yeah you know, we were just in bed and then all of a sudden it came and attacked the camp i don't know what was going on uh i'll peek up over the top of the cart um and i and i'll say uh maybe you should ask your scientist friends about that uh all right he goes and he gets on he goes hey uh dr arn yeah we're we're clear yeah it's down yeah it's down yeah 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 that's what i did yeah all right yeah, and then uh, they come back with the cart, but he, he has his gun on this thing. Like he's like he's not like aiming at any of you. Want to be clear, he's like keeping his gun with the guys. He moves around. It. He's not sure if it's down or not. And he kind of goes around the part of it where it's blown open, and he's kind of has his gun pointed at the part that's blown open. So, uh, um, I'm gonna kneel down so that I'm close to the captain, um, and I'm gonna say. We should probably not be here. I think we should just like head back. 
Um, Rhett and uh, Wyatt show up, and you can see that this thing is dead. You see the, the third cart from uh, Star's Edge coming back, and um, Rhett kind of like pulls up to the thing, and he kind of like he's got his, he's, he's got his pistol holstered and everything. He's kind of like rubbing his head. Um, he's not wearing much besides like his underwear. Like he's wearing underwear and like an undershirt, and like has like a freaking vest on pretty much. Um, he's having a night, and uh, he 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 goes over to the the guy that shot the thing, and he's he goes. Uh, Looks at him and he goes, uh, undermounted rocket launcher, huh? And he's like, yep. And Rhett goes, uh, are, are you guys sticking around or what are you doing? I'm with Rhett, so. Rhett, Rhett goes, uh, hey, why? Hey, uh, next time you guys go, guess, bring us, can you bring us back a few of those? Yeah, I want some. Yeah, that'd be handy. Yeah. Jeez. He's like, Look at this. And he, he's like kind of looking at like how like this thing's been torn apart. Um, All right. Myrtle I'm gonna um thing. yeah I, while while we're over here I'm just gonna I, I got the message so I was like you know uh, we're gonna head back so we can check with all of the people in the camp and make sure everything's okay and everybody can get back there you guys got this under control mm -hmm. have some discussions amongst yourself um so yeah. Yeah, as you kind of go to pull away uh just kind of cross not like trying to like block you off but kind of cross your path like. Kind of comes up next to you like this. Um, the other cart comes up with the driver, and then uh, Dr. Arn in the back, uh, like kind of waves to you, Myrtle. And uh, she goes, um, she kind of looks over the thing dead and looks at you guys as well. <laughs> you were asking for cooperation, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you don't seem surprised, uh, but we sure were. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. Uh, she's like, I'm not surprised that we managed to overcome this together, but I am surprised that one of these things attacking uh, your camp or chasing you around or whatever it may be. We heard the noises. How do we you know sure. that it attacks our camp? It's like, well, we could hear it, and then we saw it pursuing you, mm -hmm. and we assumed that you were being attacked by it, and your um. Your head of security is not exactly dressed for the occasion. So I'm guessing it was kind of a surprise. Just... Not to mention, this is uh, rather... Um, the cables dangling from the back of your vehicle. I mean, you guys seem like this was pretty ad hoc effort. But you guys made, you managed to make it work, so... Who knows? Well, yeah. It probably would have been helpful. Maybe uh, you want to share some of that tech. And I'll kind of look over at the gentleman that's got that. Big old, the, the, gun, the gun, yeah. Big old gun. Yeah. Um, she's like, oh, well, you know, it's the latest thing off Earth. Uh, good for a good, a good variety of weaponry there, uh, for sure. But, um, oh, geez, wow. Um, Like I'm not. I uh, I'm sorry to see this happen. Uh, did it attack? How many people are out here right now? Uh, there is a total of the crew, your guys, the chief of security, and then there's the there's the uh, four of them from Star's Edge. So there's eight. Sunny is tired. <laughs> this and is true. Is now is still is still like trying to get used to being on gravity to this extent. Um, maybe the oxygen's a little bit too much right now, with all of the you know excitement. <laughs> um. Oh jeez. <laughs> you want to um, um, you want to head back and uh, we can suss this out in the morning? Yeah, I, I really should put some clothes on. Yeah. Yeah, um and then uh you can see that that Dr. Arn kind of talks to one of the people that she's with and the the person kind of reaches back into the back of their cart and uh one of the scientists comes up and gets out of the cart with like like a box and starts walking towards the creature. 
And Dr. Arnold looks back and goes, oh, waste not, right? We're gonna get some tissue samples to bring back. I'm sure you guys have, I'm sure your camp will have plenty to do with the rest of the corpse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they go over and they start gathering some tissue samples. They take, they take some random samples from the tissue. Um, and eventually, uh, uh, Rhett comes back over and he's like, uh, Dr. Arn, uh, thanks for your guys' help. We appreciate it. And Dr. Arn, no problem. I um, hope you guys are okay. If you guys need supplies or anything like that, uh, I'm not sure what kind of damage was sustained to your camp, but I hope everyone's okay. And Rhett's like, yeah, everyone's okay. It attacked like a storage. So she's like, well, that's good. That's good. And you guys did a valiant effort here. Well, I have to say, there's no one better. I, uh, no one better here on the plant to go into a unknown territory and deal with the problems than it sounds like you guys. Yeah, it looks like we have some really great skills here that are going to be, you know, put to use. Will we explore everything? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Hanson, did you get those samples? And he goes, uh, Yeah, I got, I got no problem, uh, doctor. And she goes, Okay, well. I will mount those up. Uh, Tomas, you ready to get get moving? I think we might just uh, start to make it a beeline back towards uh, the lab and come out. The, the guy with the uh, the officer, the guy, the security officer is kind of like uh, puts his gun on. He slings his gun up, goes, puts it back into the back of the, the cart and everything. Uh, yeah, no problem. He's like, well, uh, first kill on the alien world, huh? Not bad. Um, well, thanks for, uh, you know, uh, good, it was good hunting with you all. It was definitely something. It was definitely something. Right, so well, you folks have a have a good, safe night. You kind of you kind of tilt like his helmet off and they get in their cart, their fancy cart, and speed off into the night back towards the star's edge. Uh, Red's, um, Red's kind of sitting there. You guys have both the cart, both your carts at the camp. They're not in great shape. They've been kind of has some stress on them, but they're just they're operational. All right, well, we'll turn ours around and we'll see you back there. Right, goes. Okay, uh, you guys all gonna travel together then? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, all right. He's like, well, um, just make sure you just do a check in when you get back. Let's know you made it back. Okay, just make sure it was you secure. got it. I appreciate it. He's like, and he goes up and he like he uh uh he uh, pat kind of goes to pat you on the shoulder. Merlin, like, that, was, that was some good driving back there. I appreciate you guys working together. Why, uh, Zenny? Uh, thanks for keeping us safe. Yeah. Uh, he gets his card. What were you for? He scoots off. All right. So, uh, we're going to start on our little drive back. I mean, so if you take the cart at normal speed, it's maybe like 20 minutes, like a, like a 15 minute drive. Uh, yeah. but you can certainly do it slow and make it like an hour drive if you want to take it slow. <laughs> <laughs> kind of joyride it out. We could, because we can talk when there's nobody else around. We All wanted right. to discuss anything before we headed back. All right. Um, I would say that, like, when... Because Wyatt's joining our car. Yeah. As, as, like, he gets in, he would notice that Zenny very, like, with a lot of forced effort as the other team is driving away, takes her hand off of the holstered gun that she was gripping very, very tightly. Uh, and um, as we're as we're driving, we'll pull out the vial and hold it up. It was chasing this. That's what they brought back to the today. Wow. Yeah. Great. Well, we definitely don't want that back in our uh, our dwelling. No. But I don't. So they were Do camped. Think... I will say this. They were camped out near the like the waterfront out here. There is loose dirt. This is if you were going to bury something, this would be it. Without, yeah. Without, without the night ivy around. The night ivy makes the ground a lot tighter, but around here is a bit looser. Yeah, I think we should yeah. definitely bury it somewhere. Cause I don't want it to get lost, but I don't want anybody to know that it's still <clears throat> here. Well, here's the problem, though, is if we just bury it, what are the odds one of these things is going to come back and just right. 
smash it. It's definitely possible. I don't know what they did to it. We're safer to bury it, though. I mean, way safer. Yeah. Um, is there anything in this cart or on our persons that I could use to take a small amount of what's in this vial back with, like the like a like a very small amount? Yeah, to there, see there's if like if a, there's there's like some small like little like like uh, vials, like really tiny like sample vials. Yeah. And in the cart wanna... usually used for scientific research. So they do have like some yeah. science kits. Also, yeah, you could easily do a, a, yeah. like like put a little bit over. Okay. Yeah, I just want to take a small amount back with us, like. Hopefully small enough that it's not going to cause yeah. any issue okay. before we bury this like larger amount because sure. Yeah, no problem. But there's like a I shovel in the, in the back of the cart and everything. Yeah, and you guys you guys kind of dig up a little spade it, and you kind of put it through. Yeah. yeah. Have an ID geotagged on the thing too. It's no problem. Yeah. Okay. I think yep. it's important to see just and we're talking have like somebody a, like, who knows a, what they're what, like a very small amount of this material, like a very, like, like, like a tiny, tiny amount. Literally like enough smidge. to compare it to the past okay. research that they had okay. on it and see what is not the same. Sounds good. Perfect. If anything, that's literally as much as I wanted to get from it. Not enough to like run new tests or anything, but like, gotcha. Hey, point A and point B, they don't match. <laughs> you right. know? No. Uh, guys, mosey on back to the camp. Uh, people are kind of walking around, clean, clean up that one section of it. Uh, when you do get back in, uh, you get, I think, Wyatt, you get a ding with, like, a report of what was inside the the, lap, the storage facility. Although you guys clearly know what was inside. And that yeah. that vial was uh, part of the storage, the storage uh, manifest. So, yeah. I want to head towards the building that was collapsed and... And help the best I can clean up. Yeah, you help out clean up. You kind of, they're kind of going through and picking through and see what they can salvage and everything like that. They lost about 50, like about like fifty percent of the stuff in there. Um, they're kind of disappointed. They're like, "That's a big setback." People are like, "What made what set that thing off?" Uh, we've never had any problems. They don't. They usually oh, come I would have told everybody in the cart these these two that I didn't want to tell anybody yet. I don't know anything. And, yeah, that we should like that we should I'm just be busy very cleaning. careful who we yeah. <laughs> Mostly because, like, I don't want people to just be talking because some people here are chummy with Storm's Edge. Stars, Storm's Edge. Um, so, yeah. So they, they, Storm's Edge is more accurate. Right? They they kind of uh, go through it all, and um, they're, they're, you, you help them out, Wyatt. They manage to kind of clean it up, salvage what they can. They're taking a new inventory of what's there what's not, um, and they're trying to figure out what they might need to bring down from the Jersey Kid Ross to make up uh, for it all. But... Uh, with that said, I think we're gonna uh, end for tonight on that note. Woo! I think that's fair. So is that pretty good? That's that's a fun one. That was a good one. Uh, yeah. Okay? You okay, oh Donna? my goodness. You okay, Donna? Ooh. Yeah, I'm great. Yeah. It's a good thing I wasn't riding that thing whenever it got blown up. I don't know what your obsession <laughs> with like yeah, riding it. <laughs> bad idea. Bad yeah. bad. Very yeah. bad. Yeah, this thing was just dragging the carts around. Yeah. And like stopping through freaking like you know. Buildings, and you're like, Oh, I'm gonna get on top of it, have fun. Like, watch me. I'll figure like, out how to domesticate it. Uh, like a no, it'll, it'll, not everything it'll, can be domesticated, my friend. It'll, it'll, yeah, <laughs> trust me, no, it'll, it'll tame you first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's be clear on how that goes. Well, anyway, hey, thanks for coming out and watching. Like, everyone, the gifted subs, you guys are awesome. We really appreciate your support and everything. Uh, once again, we have a giveaway tonight. There it is. Uh, you type in the word sample, you see what the word was tonight. It was sample. Finally went back to making it an actual <laughs> thing. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, it was good to pay attention. Uh, so once again, our winner of our giveaway night will win a PDF bundle from Green Running of the Expanse Role Playing Game. In addition, you'll get a nice little Abrax Christmas bundle with a soundtrack, a shirt, and some dice. And for my friend, my good friends, the Hunters, uh, like their name is Cool Dragon Venture. I painted one up. If you want to see it. I have it on like Twitter and I have it on my Instagram. If you look for the last dragon miniature I painted, that's it. It's a pretty badass miniature, actually. I like I, I had a lot of fun painting it. Um, it's big. It's like it's like this, like in the wing span. It's it's massive. So I'll that's send those awesome. out. Yeah, I'll send those out to somebody tonight, but put the word sample in last chance. Um, once again, guys, the best way to support us is through just following us, watching us, liking stuff, jumping in the chat, dropping your word. If you're like, if you uh, think if you want to root someone on, tell them, hey, go Zanny, you're the best. 
um, you know, oh, I, I identify with Zenny suspicion so much. That's what my real life is <laughs> like. Um, you know, that, that stuff's great. But another way to support us too is to go on to Patreon and Kofi. Those help keep us afloat. Uh, we have a podcast. We have all kinds of stuff like that too. You can go find us all everywhere. We're around, but we uh, thank you all for hanging out and watching our Express Uh We're back next week on the 31st. We will have Ian Lemke from Green Ronin, one of the top developers for the Expanse roleplay game, playing with us. Um, he will be playing a character named Dev Jameson, the Cultivator. Um, mm. And our yeah, and our next game will be well. We'll say we're going to jump in a little bit and start the expedition. So this will be that'll be a lot of fun. We're going to start the expedition. So I got I got to talk to crew a little bit. I know uh, Donna can't be here, but. You'll you'll be back in the shuttle piloting it. There you go. So that, I'll that, be piloting. You'll be piloting it, right? We, you've proven yourself on ground and in atmosphere, so they trust you now with the shuttles. But all right, everybody, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull a winner for tonight. Let me go ahead and pull up my nightbot, and I will hit. There's roll it, and someone's gonna win. Uh, and we're only doing U.S. only for our giveaway. Uh, it's a lot to ship out, guys. It's, it's getting really expensive to go international. So, but here we go. Uh, our winner tonight is Zyvin. Hey, Zyvin. Zyvin. Ooh. I don't know Zyvin, but I haven't seen you, but I appreciate you coming over and checking us out. Zyvin, I will message you after the episode and get your information to get you this cool prize package and set you up to get all the cool stuff from Green Running as well. Um, so thank you, uh, Zyvin, for uh, watching the show and checking it out. Yeah, you bet, man. No problem. I, that's what we're here for. Everybody, thank you so much. I had a lot of fun tonight. Uh, we will be back next week on the 31st with uh, Avarx Precipice, uh, Thea Reborn, episode 14, with our buddy Ian Lemke. All right, everyone, uh, see you next week then. Right, later. <laughs>